Well, after the fun of the opening Thursday night, now we get things underway for everyone. It is the first Friday of the high school football season. Great to be with you once again here on WOSN alongside my partner, Miles Holliday. I'm Randy Roberts. Partner, we saw one rivalry, Napoleon in Defiance, on a Thursday night get uh, their game underway for the 101st time. New budding rivalry and a traveling trophy on the line tonight. And a good matchup here. A couple of teams looking to improve from what they did a year ago as the Panthers of Parkway entertained the Knights of Crestview. Yeah, a little appetizer last night, right? Now we got the buffet of football. WSN absolutely doing a great job covering so many games. And where else would you rather be than right here, right now, partner? Because both coaches, the first time with their programs, mm -hmm. we've got a little history here. Somebody's going to get their first win. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Crestview Knights. Uh, Started 3-0 and a year ago, ended up 4-6, and but nine returning starters on both offense and defense. As Miles mentioned, they've got a new head coach, Cole Harding, eight years as an assistant at Van Wert, five of those as the offensive coordinator. Uh, those of you uh, that uh, have been uh, following high school football, I think you know the success of Van Wert. I think you know it starts with our offense, so why not kind of bring the guy that ran that over to your school and see if you can kind of mirror that success. Yeah, Cole Harding, the quarterback whisperer, right? Look at the quarterbacks he had at Van Wert. Nate Place, Owen Treese, and Aiden Pratt. Boy, the guy knows what he's doing on offense. You're going to see a lot of quick tempo, a lot of quick screen game. They're going to run the football at the quarterback position. They should put up a lot of points here tonight. So junior quarterback Bryson Penix uh, spent some time as a running back a year ago, but he's going to take over this offense. He's got uh, a senior running back in Isaac Klein to hand the ball off to. He's also got a senior receiver, Kellen Putnam, at 529 yards, eight touchdowns a year ago. That's going to lead a deep rotation of receivers they plan to kind of run guys in after they play hard but I think the most important part of that uh, group on offense five seniors are going to see time on the offensive line and not just five seniors these guys are seasoned and they are big fellas too I mean they run about 220 across the offensive line the offense is going to go around uh, Penix though Bryson Penix number five junior had a tremendous year last year carrying the football, played a little bit of quarterback. Because remember, Carson Hunter, that guy was an unbelievable quarterback a year ago. Moved on, Penix played running back, but they feel as if Penix is going to do a good job filling that spot. And the reason behind the rotation is because a lot of these same names are going to play on defense, and the idea is maybe not 100% both ways. Maybe if we get guys to go 60 70%, keep guys fresh, but Penix and Klein are going to lead a linebacker crew that's kind of the, the strength of this Crestview team, and they're looking for maybe eight different players to see some time on the defensive line. Defensive coordinator Jack, uh, Jake Harmon told me he could go 12 deep at the defensive line, so they're going to rotate guys, but it's going to be tough to rotate guys because Parkway's not going to give them a chance. They're going to be a really high-tempo offense, tough to get guys in there if they're getting worn out if the offense is on the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Let's now take a look at the uh, home team, the Panthers of Parkway, coming off a two-and-eight year a year ago, still in the playoff hunt up until the last week. Of the regular season, they rotated two guys at quarterback, senior Fletcher Smith, junior Braden Bruns, uh, expected to uh, see who gets the call there tonight. I had a chance to visit with uh, Jake Circle and the whole group yesterday at practice. These guys are dialed in. He has done a great job of getting the focus of these Parkway Panthers, and they got a playmaker. Wait till you see Fletcher Smith play. He is the undeniable leader of this football team. When he talks, everybody pays attention, and he is going to run this offense. They're trying to get a snap off every 18 seconds on offense. Chip Kelly like the Oregon mm -hmm. Ducks here in Parkway. Uh, while Cole Harding had his background in offense, Jake Circle comes off of defense, where he's the defense coordinator at Minster, and he's actually going to take over a Parkway team that's going to be without their best defensive player from a year ago. Eddie Nichols was an all-MAC performer, both offense and defense. That's going to be a tough spot to fill for the Panthers. Yeah, no doubt that Jake Circle is going to be part of that defensive situation, right? All that time at Minster, he knows what he's doing. But Nick Hawk, a, a big name here in Parkway, uh, is part of that last team that won this rivalry in, in uh, 2019. And Nick Hawk is going to run the defense. They're going to be a 3-4 type base. 
But, buddy, I'm telling you right now, don't be surprised if we have one of these 40 to 38 kind of games. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of points here tonight. A couple of uh, leading guys that are expected to uh, kind of step up early on for Parkway on defense of a big senior defensive lineman, Landon May, two and a half sacks from a year ago, and a junior linebacker, Colin Lagenkamp, had 75 at tackles part of a group that does have a little bit of experience. So there is a couple of guys to kind of build on for this Panther defense. Yeah, no doubt about it, though. They, they're they going to score points. Uh, they had 51 in their scrimmage against Paulding. They, you should watch them at practice yesterday, Randy. They were just getting to the ball in a hurry and just snapping it. They will signal one call in from the line of scrimmage, and they're going to go in a hurry. And we want to tell you that our presenting sponsor for our game tonight is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank your way and our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Lotix Jewelry your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lotix.com Parkway in the black and it will be Crestview in the white and while we have a minute before we get to our opening kickoff. Miles, what are some keys to the game you're looking forward to? I'll start way? with the visitor of the Knights from uh, Crestview. Number one, relax and have fun, right? Sometimes when you're a, a brand new football coach at a new school, right, you get a little too tense. Nah, just have fun. Let the guys play. Enjoy yourself. Small to big. If they run screens and get the ball out quickly to the guys on the outside, get one little block, turn a small little pass into big yardage, and then Penix powered. Bryson Penix, number five, 6'1", 190 pound, a junior, 368 yards rushing last year. He is a guy that can move and throw, but he's a runner first. So it looks like the way that uh, Parkway is set up, they're going to get the football first. It was interesting. Uh, Miles and I went down on the field about an hour before a kick, talked to uh, the coaching staffs, and both of them kind of agreed that if they won the opening toss, they wanted the ball first. Yeah, talk about the three tips uh, for uh, Parkway. Number one, protection. they got a great quarterback in Fletcher Smith. Are you going to be able to protect him? We know that one of the strengths defensively for Crestview is the defensive line. Can they protect the quarterback, Fletcher Smith? Number two, open field tackles. Crestview loves to run quick screens. You're going to get the guy to the ground if they're going to do that. And then number three, don't empty the box. I think if they empty the box against this Crestview team, it's going to allow for Hunter Penix or Bryson Penix to carry the football for a big yardage. Looks like we are just about ready to go. Hayden Parrott has it teed up for Crestview. This meeting, by the way, the 20th all-time Crestview leads the all-time series 14 to 5 and has won nine of the last ten. Nice little traveling trophy they're gonna play for is this kickoff taking about the 15-yard line. See some of that speed just off the kick return out to the 35. And a good return for Logan Green, one of those seniors. Expect to see some time in the backfield for Parkway. How about Zayden Smith or Zayden Martin running down at making the first tackle? The junior linebacker. Setting the tone on special teams. Looked like Parkway had a little bit of a wedge that could have popped, but it was shut down by the great tackle by Zayden Martin. Parkway is going to start this one at their own 35, and now the officials are going to stop things for just a minute. And issue with the center, I do believe. Well, that's an unfortunate first snap of the game, and he's got to come out. That's Gavin Garwood, number 68, going in to play the center position. Yeah, Ben Bates, number 58, has come out, and now we see him. There's an issue with something now. Flags, more issues to start. And right, going to get a false start. I think they're going to call Caleb Newsbaum, the senior, the right guard. You know, you get that. Nervous energy going, and you got to hold tight for a second because the guy leaves the game, and all the next thing you know, false start, first and 15. Parkway backed up here, and now the first play of the season. A good run, getting some of the yardage back and just carrying defenders to midfield. That's Logan Green just inside zone. Keeps those feet moving for a first down, and you see the quick tempo already established by Parkway. Gain of 20 on the run. Quick stab. I don't think everyone was ready for it. And that's going to be a broken play. Good stop in the backfield. Ren Sheets, that was a name we mentioned when we saw Crestview last year. Yeah, Ren Sheets was our dynamic dude when he had them against Wayne Trace. But Ren Sheets, sometimes you got to work hard for sacks. Other times they're a gift right there. That's a gift for Ren Sheets. A little miscommunication by the Parkway offense. It's going to be a loss of five. 
Sets up second and 15. Saw second and long, not much of an issue. Going to go back to Green once again, but nowhere to go. Not about the first man there, but Penix, what he's able to do on defense, saw number five for Crestview, kind of stop that play early on. Well, Penix definitely recognized they were going back to the inside zone. Split the offensive line, got the leg tackle. Say no gain on the play. Ball just moved from one side of the 45-yard line to the other. It's going to bring up third and 15. There's Fletcher Smith under pressure. Now he's going to throw this one all the way across the field. Has the man open, but it's going to be incomplete. Had number zero, Devin Crouch, in the middle of the field, but that long throw allowed Crestview to run up and make the stop. A dangerous throw indeed, right? What's the cardinal sin? Never throw back to the middle of the field, especially if you're not going to throw it a laser. Almost a great catch and almost an interception. Parkway kind of fortunate it fell to the ground so they can punt the football. See twin safeties back for Crestview as this one is punted away. Fielded inside the 20-yard line. And it is, I believe, Hunter Jones number two out near the 30. Now Landon Yunker, Pitter Patton down, broke down, got the tackle, or also been a longer return. Uh, it looks like there's a flag down about midfield. Usually that's a spot where it's gonna be against the return team. But however, they are going over to talk to Coach Harding right now. Yep, it is gonna be against Crestview. Yeah, a, a face mask on the return. So that will back up Crestview a little bit further. And they're gonna put Ren Sheets, six foot six receiver down here to the near side. And Parkway's gonna roll up and do a two press. So Knights will have their opening possession of the night from their own 23 yard line. First down fake. Spenix fake to give, then kept it, but a nice play by the Parkway defense. Keep that to a minimal game. Yeah, how about Jonas Farmer coming out of the pile, fired up, number 65. One of the first guys there. A man that has a warrior tattoo on his forearm because he says in life you've got to be a warrior. Oh, right there, he showed he's not just a panther. He's a warrior making that tackle. It's a game of two, brings up second and eight. Benix trying to stop, nice quick move, looking to throw. Fires this one, pass is going to be caught outside the 45-yard line. Nice catch in traffic, Kellen Putnam, one of those names we mentioned, the offensive playmakers for Crestview. Yeah, how about Putnam? Rising up and getting the back half of the football. Good athletic ability. 529 yards a year ago. Pick it up where he left off. Crestview team in a hurry. Save the 47. Pick up a 22. Penix rolls out under pressure. Didn't see him. Gets it out to that far sideline. Pass is caught by Hunter Jones. Jones able to get into Parkway territory. Yeah, folks, if you're watching this, this isn't one of those games you can get up and go to the fridge, right, and not miss a play. This is not your grandpa's football. They are going to go fast. Both offenses get to the line of scrimmage, and they motor in a hurry. Hey, sometimes you, you listen to a podcast and think maybe you're set on 1.25 speed and you think somehow my, my TV's moving a little quick, but that's not the issue. Now we might have some sort of safety. I think there's a uniform issue. With uh, Bo Eggleston. Liam Putnam going to come in and take his spot. What a luxury to have a guy on the bench at six foot three that can come and run the slot. Penix has got three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Now they fake the call, go back to the sideline. And they caught Logan Green sneaking up. Looked like it's going to be a blitz, and he's kind of caught at the last scrimmage. Here he comes. And quickly, we'll get rid of it. And one of the screens there, a little fake. The hips to Putnam. Putnam will take a big hit, but he will have what appears to be a Crestview first down. Yeah, Putnam does a great job getting a block, getting the other Putnam. Putnam and Putnam helping each other out. Let's pick up six when they needed five is enough for a first down. Continues to uh, move the clock on our Locks Jewelry scoreboard, nearing the eight and a half minute mark here of quarter number one. And now they got problems with the down box. And the chains, the chains have not moved. Well, if they if they spotted it right there, the chains should have moved to be a first down. It can't be, it can't be a third down past the down line, right? 
That is what. Yeah, they're they're going to move the chains now. I think the 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 side was, official forgot to wave the chains. Right? It's a, hey, it's game one for everybody. Yeah, right? that's that's what we said the other day. Heads up to the uh, official the opposite side who saw it and kind of brought that to everyone's attention. Good run trying to work that left side for Crestview as they go with Braxton Leaf. Yeah, Braxton able to get positive yardage because of the work of Evan Walls, the left guard, number 68. Boy, great job moving black jerseys out of the way. Second down and four because of the offensive line clearing the way. Six play of the drive coming up here for Crestview. Right back to Leith, trying to work the right side, runs out of one tackle, but can't quite make it up to the second. And on the bottom of the pile for Parkway. Now Logan Green, yet again, on the tackle. Already have him for three tackles early in this football game, the linebacker being very active for the Panthers. And now the officials are going to help out Derek Wagner, junior defensive lineman, had his jersey come up over his shoulder pads. Inside slot uncovered. Third and one coming up here. Throw to the sideline is going to be caught. Another first down as they get it out to Jones. Jones still on his feet. Finally is out of bounds at about the 25. Make that 24, maybe 23-yard line. Yeah, good recognition by Cole Harding, the head coach at Crestview. And he's also calling the plays. But already the second time he's been able to recognize coverage of Parkway. Giving up that short little hitch route. Go ahead and take the free yards. I'll give it about 10, I think, to about the 23. Another quick throw. Getting this one out to Putnam. Putnam's going to be tripped up as he gets inside the 20. Good one-on-one -on -one stop there. Noah Adams, number one for Parkway with a big play. Man, it's a good thing Adams made that tackle or else it would have been a big play. Remember, one of our keys was open field tackling. Mm -hmm. So far, Parkway doing a good job in space getting the white jerseys to the ground. Second and roughly five, it looks like, from just inside the 20-yard line. At some point in time, though, the secondary for Parkway is going to have to roll up, take those short throws away. Penix, low snap, still with some trouble, is just going to fall on it. Talked about that in our Thursday game. You see a team in a shotgun, you know, like you said, once or twice, you know it's going to happen. Yeah, if you're going to run shotgun football, just, you know, as an offensive guy, you know that at some point in time it's going to be a mishandle, a bad snap, and you got to live with it. Unfortunately for Crestview, they had some huge momentum on this drive, and now they're looking at third and long because of it. Yeah, backs them back up to the original line of scrimmage for its third and ten. Penix looking to throw, fires a bullet. That one is going to be caught. Good effort out to the far side. Hunter Jones able to come up with it again and give the Knights another first down. Yeah, football Jones on the on the catch. Partner, that was a catch because he ran an unbelievable route. Inside, inside pushed off his defender by using a body lean and coming back outside, first down. First and goal from the nine. Now Braxton Leith powering ahead. And he will get roughly the five-yard line. Yeah, it had been a workmanlike drive for Crestview early in this game. Not a lot of big chunk yardage, but they're just kind of taking what the defense allows. 12th play of the drive coming up right now for Crestview. And Lee now is able to stop, cut up field, but he's going to be brought down. See who comes up off the bottom of the pile. I believe number nine for Parkway, a part of that, and Landon Hamrick. Yeah, Parker Lyons, the defensive lineman, number 59, did a good job of forcing the action back inside to his other defenders, and they were able to make the play. Lost a run, a one on the run. It's now third and goals. We quickly have gotten down to five minutes to go here in quarter number one. Penix in the shotgun. The option pitch, a little give, and getting into the end zone is Bo Eggleston, and it's a score for the Knights. Now this is something that Cole Harding brought with him from Van Wert. They ran this a ton with Aiden Pratt at the quarterback. Everybody thought it was going to speed option to the outside, and you forget, hey, Andy Reid loves this play as well in the Super Bowl, and run the little shovel pass inside for an easy six. Hayden Parrott now on to attempt the extra point. And that was a Leland Smith Insurance touchdown. Leland Smith Insurance services your first call for all of your insurance needs. As the extra point is up and good. So under Lonix Jewelry scoreboard is 7 0. Crestview strikes first. We'll take a break here at WOSN.
Crestview able to put together a 13-play scoring drive ends with uh, Bo Eggleston from six yards out on a shovel pass with the first Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown of the year. Your first call is Leland Smith Insurance Services. 7-0 on our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Lonix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lonix.com. Good kick return coverage by the Knights will pin Parkway deep here as they begin their second drive of the evening. Yeah, Devin Crouch kind of caught in no man's land. He, was that ball going to keep rolling out of bounds? You, you can't really take that chance, right? You hope that it's going to roll out and then you get good field position. But if it dies right before the sideline, all of a sudden you're pinned. So Crouch had to pick it up and unfortunately kind of threw off the timing of the return and Crestview hammered him to the ground. And Crouch also... Might have either got a little sweat or he got a little finger poke in the eye as well. You see one of the coaches trying to wash a little sweat out of the eye. The Panthers will start this drive from their own 19, just under five minutes to go here in quarter number one. It's a tipped ball on first down, and Ren Sheets once again able to use that six foot six inch frame of his to deflect that pass. Remember Cole Harding Kim comes over from Van Wert and they had a, a big, tall defensive end, right? They also played quarterback, a skill position. Aiden Pratt, remember he was a defensive line, a huge, mm -hmm. huge reach with those arms. Well, they got another skill guy can do it here, and that is Ren Sheets, six foot six, tough to throw over top of that. Second and 10, QB keeper here, able to get a little positive yardage. You know, Fletcher Smith just one reach of a tackle on an ankle, or else he's got some big time yardage. You see he's got some quickness in those feet. Good job by Crestview, barely getting a, a hand on the foot, getting him to the ground. Give him a game of two, it's gonna bring up third and eight. So the ball just outside the 21 yard line. That looks like Parkway They'll flip their formation here. Changing their receivers, a little pressure coming. Fletcher Smith tried to run out of it, but Ren Sheets, among a couple others, able to put a stop to that. Yeah, hats off to Jake Harmon, the defensive coordinator at Crestview. He brought Bryson Penix on a blitz. Nobody picked it up, got to the pressure real quick on Fletcher Smith, and Ren Sheets is going to be able to clean it up. So far, the line of scrimmage being dominated by this Crestview defensive line. It's back to a fourth and ten. And Parkway will punt this one away. High spiral punt headed towards the sideline where it is caught at the 45. Jones, Jones able to get into Parkway territory, so he gets a decent return. That's going to be a short field for Crestview. Well, anytime you go to a tight formation on the punt, you're going to sacrifice some coverage. Parkway had a little bit of a tight formation there on the punt to protect the punt, but at the same time, you could not get down to cover it. Crestview, fantastic position to start drive number two. They already lead this one 7 0 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Let's see if Crestview takes a shot right here. Going to go trips to the field. Basically, get one on one down here. Got great real estate. Go ahead and take a shot early. Starting from the 33, it looked like that one might have been scooped off the turf, but uh, officials let that one play on as the. Short pass for about four yards. Now about Caden Berry, number 25, comes up, makes a tackle on the quick screen. And so far, Parkway doing a really good job of handling those Crestview quick screens. Second, and we'll call it about six from just inside the 30-yard line. Penix looking to throw, has a man middle of the field. That one is going to be tipped and winning the interception was Landon Hamrick, number nine. Yeah, Hamrick just kind of played his zone position, got to the middle of the field, read the quarterback's eyes. Penix never saw him. Could have been a great big interception momentum turner for Landon Hamrick and his Panther defense. Sets up a third down. Third and about six from just inside the 30-yard line. This might be four down territory for Crestview. Parkway able to read that play. A little counteraction this time with Jarrett Harding. 
but the Parkway front able to read that one, stuff it for a loss. Now, second big play in this game by Jonas Farmer, number 65, E-I-E-I-O in the backfield for Crestview all night long. Loss of about three back to the 32. It's going to be fourth and nine. You're stuck here in no man's land. Crestview will keep the offense on the field. Yeah, watch the football. Don't give up five free yards by jumping. Penix looking to throw. He's going for it all. He's got Ren Sheets through the hands. Incomplete. Well, if you're wondering if Penix could sling the football or not, if he's just going to be a running quarterback, right there is an example. Young man can throw it. Tremendous post route. And that's one that Ren Sheets is going to want to have back tomorrow when they're watching film. Say, Coach, I should have had that one. And you know what you say as a coach? Yes, you should have. <laughs> All you can say, right? <laughs> That's right. Learn from it and move on. Bullet dodged That's by the right. Panthers. It's Crestview unable to take advantage of the short field. Now Parkway will have it from their own 32. Just over two minutes left to go here in quarter number one, our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Really important that Parkway picks up a first down on this drive. Got to get some momentum offensively. Kind of been scuttling a little bit early in this game. Have had one big play. It was the first play of the game, and that's really been about it. Might be another one right here as they have found one of their big go-to back, Logan Green, on the pitch. It will get to the outside. He'll get in the Crestview territory. Yeah, definitely circle that one on the play sheet and come back to it on this series. Crestview had no idea what the responsibility was on the speed option. Run goes for 21. It's a quick first down. Now they're going to run the same thing this time to the far side of the field. This time it is eaten up. Right on top of that one is Liam Putnam, number 84 for Crestview, and he's going to hold them to a loss. Now Putnam must have heard us talking about running it again, right? Said, okay, run it to my side. I'll show you what to do. And Crestview's Penix leaving the field right now at number 53, checking in for him at linebacker. That's going to be Aiden Martin. So loss of one brings up second and 11 back at the 48. Fletcher, Fletcher Smith moves the back. He's going to take off and run. And it looks like he's going to have enough for first down as he gets to the 35. But we do have a flag down back of the line of scrimmage. This one's going to come back in a hold. Now I think they're going to call it behind the, the play, and that's going to make the Parkway faithful really upset because they don't think it was a part of the play that got the quarterback going, but I think the official's gonna be saying, no, I disagree. Good example though of Fletcher Smith and how exciting his feet are. He can take off. Yeah, he just took off and shot out of a cannon. Now they're backed up 10 yards back to their own 42. It's gonna bring up second and about 21. Already the third time that they've been behind the six early in this football game. Got to get back on schedule. Stop hurting yourselves. Unforced errors really costing Parkway. Fletcher Smith once again moves the back. Same play, the design run, trying to take off. Crestview will read this one as Smith will be held to a gain of about a yard or two. Yeah, what defense have done now since all quarterbacks like to run the football, right? When they time you go empty, you have one of your linebackers be the check guy on the quarterback. And that time, Crestview did a good job, tried to run inside trap, a 10 trap with the quarterback. Crestview up to the challenge. So game of two brings up third and 19. Clock running inside of a minute to go here in quarter number one. Fletcher Smith again gets the snap, rolls out. Another flag coming in in the uh, backfield. This pass is caught. Ball comes out. It's going to be incomplete. Unable to hold on to it as Caden Berry all the way to the ground. We'll see what happens here. I believe Hayden Parrott's a guy that knocked it free. Got to survive the catch. But it's not going to matter. Another hold against Parkway. You can see Fletcher Smith, he feels more comfortable leaving the pocket, right? That time mm -hmm. didn't really have to leave the pocket, but he likes to go ahead and leave the pocket, use those feet. They're going to decline the penalty, which I think is a smart decision, force a fourth down. Ball comes back to the 44. The incomplete pass stops the clock. 26.6 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Yeah, if I'm Parkway, though, I don't chance it 
and kicking it deep into the hands of Hunter Jones again. Try to get to the sideline. Jones and Evan Sowers, number one, both deep. They're both standing at about their own 20-yard line. Gunner's got to do the work getting upfield. Is going to go to Jones. Jones, again, using that far sideline, is able to get out across the 35. And Yunker will have to run at least one play. Yunker does a good job of hemming that in for Parkway or also with a big yardage. That's two times now that Crestview has tried to get to that left sideline, doing a good job on the outside gunner, forcing him inside the hash, and it frees up the return. Of course, we saw a great return last night in the Defiance and Napoleon game. Wilder with that left yeah, return did. really turned that whole game around. It was 7-0 Napoleon at that moment. And Wilder just blew that game open with that return, tied it up. Well, actually gave him the lead, 8-7. Crestview waiting for the officials to whistle in. that They are ready to go here. 15 seconds to go, quarter number one. Fenix is going to keep this one himself, trying to cut up field. Flag coming in at the end of this one. That will hold up play for a moment. And Nick Hawk, defensive coordinator for Parkway, saying early downs, we're going to go ahead and play a quarter's coverage, give it a two look, and then bounce back so all four DBs can look at the quarterback if he wants to take off running. They did a good job there. They're going to get the holding on the outside because the secondary was able to come up and get on Penix. I think they're going to get Putnam with the hold outside. Like the uh, Bronx cheer after two holding calls on your team. I think Parkway would be happy if it'd only be two, right? I think they're up to like five already in this game. As a quarterback, though, you don't mind if your offensive linemen are holding, right? Because that means you're not getting hit. That's true. So it is a downfield hold, so it's not. It's 10 yards, but it did come at the end of the play, so it's only going to bring up second and about. Are you going to make it first? First and about 15, and that's going to be the end of the opening quarter. So first quarter in the books. Crestview trying to extend that winning streak against Parkway. 7 up and after one, we'll take a break here on WOSF. Just about ready for the start of the second quarter. It's going to be first and about 14 coming up for Crestview following a holding call in the final play of the opening quarter. And a pass to the far sideline once again through the hands of Ren Sheets, just unable to hang on to it as he started to move upfield. Well, you wonder if the last drop right in the end zone on the post still kind of looming large in the mind of Ren Sheets because that was one that he should have had easily. And before we get another play in, we want to tell you that today's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve, your bank, your way. Second and 14 coming up now for Crestview, leading this one 7 nothing, just underway. Quarter number two, and a big play in the defensive front for Parkway, stuffing that run out of Braxton Leith. Now, middle linebacker position on this defense has been absolutely huge early. Already the fifth tackle for Logan Green, the inside linebacker, filling up a gap in a hurry. Yeah, might have lost. No, they're going to say no gain, still in the 33. So third and 14 coming up here for Crestview. Defense of Parkway hasn't been an issue. He's trying to get something going offensively. There's Green on the blitz and it runs right by. Pass. This one is tipped around, intercepted. Flag is down as I believe Penix took a shot after he threw that one. And the officials are going to sort this all out. I think it's going to be a late hit on Penix. And this is going to be a tough call for Parkway because a great juggling interception is going to be negated. And you're going to see Jake Circle lose his mind if it goes against them. And it is the call. It is on Parkway. It's going to be a post-possession foul, though. That's what the officials were discussing. And there is going to be a personal foul. How about the hands, though, of the Parkway defensive backs? I mean, that was... That one went through about three sets of hands. It did. 
Almost expected to hear Mancini play. Do, 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 do. Ball bouncing around. So they're going to go. In fact, partner, I haven't seen a ball bounce that bad since Plinko. Oh. And it's going to be a first down for Crestview. Yeah, they're going to give him 15 yards from the original spot. And a big break for Crestview is they're going to have the football all the way out near midfield. I, I get the frustration for Parkway because why bail out a bad play offensively, right? You threw it back to the middle of the field late. You ran around. You deserved to get hit. Now, did it take more than two, three steps to get to the quarterback on the hit? It's a new life for Crestview and a big run on first down as they go right up the middle again with Braxton lead. And he's going to have a first down as he gets into Parkway territory. Yeah, smart call offensively. Like your quarterback's reeling a little bit after a big hit. What do you do? Go ahead and get to an inside zone. Let the running back get some yards for you while your quarterback tries to regroup. Yeah, Parkway. Kind of feels that too. They went and quickly called the timeouts with a stoppage. We'll take one as well. Minute into quarter number two, Crestview driving, trying to add on to that 7 0 lead. Parkway with a timeout. They want to settle things down. Had the uh, interception negated because of a penalty, a big run play right after that. And a chance for the coach to kind of talk to their guys here, get things settled in before Crestview is able to add on to their 7 0 lead. Yeah, how big was that call, right? They're going to have first down about midfield as opposed to. Oh, we're still on defense. Parkway going to have to do a good job of saddling up defensively here again. Right back to that run game. They have found something with Braxton Leith, and he's able to get inside the 25, almost down to the 20. Yeah, Leith just a sophomore, but he's got veteran vision. Bounced it all the way back side, read the zone blocks inside, cut it back for another big yardage. And picked up 15 more, and I was going to bounce this one to the outside. Able to turn the corner, finally brought down. Good stop out in that far sideline. Didn't see a number on that. Yeah, right tackle, Connor Sheets. Big 66 out there for Crestview, paving the way. Tremendous job sealing the edge, but I think we're going to have another penalty. Yeah, we got a flag. This one away from the run play. This might be a, a receiver holding downfield. It's going to be a personal foul. Saw some action in the secondary in the end zone. I wonder if that's what they called. A little bit too, too much emphasis driving your man when it's 20 yards away from the ball. Officials are not going to let you do that. You usually don't get... Uh Chippy here on opening night, but it seems to be the case. Well, remember, this is a rivalry game. Both teams, high high intensity on it. New start for both programs. They want to win in the worst way. And it, it's a matchup of two tremendous uniform sets too, right? Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love Parkway's black and white. They say they want to look like Penn State a little bit. I think they look like the Miami Sharks back in the day or maybe even Permian High School from Friday Night Lights. Here we go. And, of course, you can't go wrong with red, white, and blue, right? Crestview, that, always true. a classic, fantastic look. So the net loss is two yards because it's 15 yards from where the foul occurred, according to the officials. Uh, not a dead ball foul. And back to the ground will go the Knights. Yeah, second time they ran that. They ran it for the touchdown earlier in the game. That time, no defense is going to be aggressive because you're behind the sticks. Take advantage of that rush up field. Quick little shovel pass. And back to Bo Eggleson, same play they scored their touchdown on. So he's going to pick up seven. Brings up second and five from the 16-yard line. Penix this time will fake the give. Kept it himself. And that might have been the wrong decision as Penix and Logan Green have gotten to know each other yeah. well so far tonight. Yeah, Logan Green has just been a football magnet all night long. Has been in search and destroy mode. He is a tough inside linebacker and a great one-on-one -on -one tackler. Loss of a yard. Brings up third and six under nine and a half minutes left to go before halftime. Penix rolls to the left side, fires, pass comes out. It is caught, nice little one-on-one -on -one move put on there by Hunter Jones. Looks like he's going to have enough for another first down. 
Well, at some point in time, Caden Barry, you got to recognize what the sticks are, right? You can't give up a cushion bigger than six yard and third and six. Any time they've needed those free yards, they've gone to Hunter Jones on just a little hitch route. And we get a first and goal from the six back to the ground goes Crestview. Going right back to their workhorse and Braxton Leith. I thought Leith was a little bit too eager to bounce backside on that one. If you would have stayed with the big fellas on the right-hand side, they were slowly moving the pile. When you get down to the goal line, you just got to put that nose down and get positive yardage, grind your way into the end zone. It's Leith once again cutting up field. He's going to carry one of his defenders, but yet another flag coming in at the end of this one. So we will let everyone sort this one out. Now this is going to be against the offense. Now, I'm not sure what the state record is for flags in a first half. Well, maybe we can find that at halftime, but we, we might be approaching it. This one is on Crestview. Something tells me if I look through the OHSAA on, online record book, I'm not sure penalties in the game. They, they, they don't have that. that? They should. All right. Maybe they do. I might be wrong. Wrong, wrong about the weather the other day, and everyone made fun of me for it. Yeah, that, that giant storm we had in defiance that Randy Roberts told everybody about. But a big penalty, and the beneficiary is Parkway. If they could get out of here again. Remember, they stopped Crestview in great field position earlier in this game, or else it could be 14 nothing. If they can get out of here and make it still 7 nothing, it will go a long way to give them a chance to get back in this football game and win it. Second and goal now from the 13-yard line. Penix with the fake, has to get rid of this one. Once again goes to Eggleson. Eggleson able to take a hit, still crawl forward for a few more yards. Yeah, it's a smart little play, right? You use Eggleston to kind of be a max protector and then leak out at the last second as the defense forgets about him. And that is nothing more than a two-yard pass that results in about 10 yards. you got to like having a 6'6", 195 tight end at the high school level. Yeah, they said this might be the biggest team that Crestview's ever had. Now back to Leith, trying to power his way in, stretches, and it looks like he's going to have the touchdown. Much better job of just having that nose for the end zone, dropping the shoulder pads, just working for it, getting that body lean. Falls into the end zone. Can't make every run perfect with your feet. Sometimes you just have to be a bulldozer. That time gets him a touchdown. Kitty bar the door, another easy score for the Knights. And again, a touchdown tonight brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all of your insurance needs. Now 13-0 with Hayden Parent on to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. This one is going to be good as he's going to sneak that one past the left upright. So 14-0, Crestview on top. Halfway through quarter number two, we'll take a break here on WOSN. Fourteen nothing. Our uh, score, uh, thanks to the four-yard touchdown run by Braxton Leith for Crestview, and again our touchdowns tonight. Brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for all of your insurance needs, and it's fourteen nothing. Our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over seventy years. Visit them twelve forty-four South Shannon Street in Van Werner online at Lodix.com. Well, never a good thing when you're the return guy after picking a ball up, and you look up and all the guys blocking for you are looking at you. That means that they missed their blocks, and you're going to be in for a world of hurt. And unfortunately for Devin Crouch, that's what happened on that return. The timing thrown off by the ball skipping on the grass. Parkway has it here. 7.45 left to go before halftime. Yep. Panthers will start from their own 24-yard line. Trying to make something happen Balls here. out. Fletcher Smith is going to lose the ball. We got a penalty flag coming in as well. So a little bit of everything going on. on. Now Fletcher Smith just had grabbed the football, put it away after deciding not to make the pitch. And as he is transferring the football, it got chopped out from behind. But uh, fortunately for Parkway, a black jersey fell on it. But unfortunately, there's another flag against them. 
Looks like this is going to go on Parkway. That's going to be another costly penalty, and it's tough enough sometimes to get a first down when it's first and 10. The Parkways make it really tough on themselves tonight. How many first and 20s or first and 15s have they had already? Started with the first play of the game where they had a false start. Mm -hmm. Able to break out a run. It went for uh, 20 yards, and that's been uh, about it offensively for Parkway now backed up to their own 12 where it's going to be first and 22. Fletcher Smith looking to roll. Comes back and he's going to one hop his intended receiver. Passes incomplete trying to hit Braden Bruns. He's going to see some time on the field when he's not going to also play quarterback. Well, I remember our first key to the game for Parkway protection. Right, it has been a huge issue so far in this game. How many times have you seen Fletcher Smith just kind of relax and throw from the pocket tonight? That time, a host of white jerseys on top of him in a hurry. Got him out of the pocket, and he had to skip one. It's two receivers coming to the near side, one to the far side. Smith in the shotgun. They'll give uh, to the running back. He's trying to find some room for Logan Green. Trying to uh, move that pile forward. The official's doing a good job letting this one play out. It's going to be a small game. And Connor Sheets just giving all kinds of fits to that offensive line. Number 65, you see him right there in the middle of the field. I'm sorry, 66. That's Pre Preston Kreischer also in the middle of the field. That's 500 pounds in the middle that uh, Parkway has to try and move around. Crestview doing a good job with the front defensive tackles. Green does end up running for about six, a so third and long. Now they'll fake the handoff to him. Throw this one out to the flat. Pass is caught and receiver to go down to a knee to get it. That is Wyatt Carpenter, junior receiver number 16, but he's down as soon as his knee hit, and it's still going to be fourth and long for the Panthers. Nah, no decision here, right? You have to punt the football. Offense right now still on the field. Now a late change, and the punt team does come on. Yeah, sometimes as a play call, you get a little impatient, right? But... You know, your job as a head football coach is keep your guys in the game as long as possible with your decision making, right? You go for it there and you don't get it, this game's practically over. It's fourth and 10. And the punt team up once again. High end over end punt. This one fielded by Jones. Jones has been special just about every return. Is able to get into Parkway territory. More, still a little bit more extracurricular activity, but no flag, however, at the end of that one. <laughs> Don't jinx it. They haven't set up the ball for play yet, but uh, Devin Crouch, good punt right there. Tremendous, tremendous hang time on it. Just better return game scheme on the outside. Ren, uh, Ren Sheets, great job blocking his man out to the sideline for Crestview. Allowed the guy that's been very active, Hunter Jones, on the punt game to get more positive yardage. Second time for Crestview. They're going to start on the Parkway side of the field to 44. Last time, Parkway defense was able to come up and get a stop. We'll see what happens here. 5.56 left to go before halftime on the Lottix Jewelry scoreboard. 14-0 Crestview with the lead. And now, I believe we have a timeout taken here. Or is the officials giving everyone a chance to get some water? Yeah, it's a water break and kind of let guys cool down a little bit too. You know, things have been kind of heated here of late. Both literally and figuratively. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you might see on the on the screen tonight some people wearing shirts for Parkway that have 1973 on it. It's not because of my birthday. But they're, they're putting it on there because <laughs> in 1973, Parkway first undefeated team. They went 10-0, and 0, so they're, they're spending the year celebrating the fact that those guys did a great job in 1973. So trying to uh, build up this football program once again. First time, I believe, for both of us to be down here in Parkway. Yeah, I came, I came back impressed. Unbelievable facilities here. And there's no reason why they can't win at Parkway. And Jake Circle doing a good job of getting the thing going. Number one, you have to have accountability and you have to have guys working hard. And they've got that. So they're, they're getting the building blocks down established here at Parkway to have future success member of the uh, Mighty Mac. 
everyone speaks so highly of. Not the Mac that I know with Toledo and Bowling Green and Northern <laughs> Illinois. A different kind of directional Mac. Michigan. So some of us in well, the northern part of the viewing area. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the teams in this Mac would beat some of the I teams in that other would. Mac. Especially a certain team with an ugly brown and orange uniform combination. Well, team. that's interesting you say that because Corey at Lichtensteiger, you know, he's on his staff for Crestview. Guess where he played? I know. That's why I avoided him yeah. pregame. First down for the Knights. They've got some success now. He changed up going to Jarrett Harding in at running back. So they want to rotate some guys in, keep some bodies fresh. Harding able to weave his way inside the 40 in a good game on first down. Well, we started the game out talking about how important the five guys up front for Crestview, all big and all seniors, and that inside run is really pounding that Parkway defense, and you see they're trying to get a little bit more fresh inside. A three down lineman look is just getting eaten up by the inside zone. A gain of seven on the run, quick pass getting it out to the near sideline. Pass was caught Isaac Klein, and Klein looks like he's gonna fight his way for a first down. Yeah, who on the tackle again? You guessed it, Logan Green. That young fella has had no quit in him for Parkway, just flying sideline to sideline to the football. The football magnet does it again. First down to the 33, so picked up four, which was enough. Moving in a hurry once again, going right back under the ground with Harding. Harding will get inside the 30-yard line before he's brought down. And Crestview got away with a little bit of a hold inside, and the staff at Parkway are like, hey, you've been calling hold all night. Why not on that one? Gain of six on the run is going to bring up second and four. Just under five minutes left to go before halftime. Penix looking to throw. Long one to the sideline. Pass is caught. I believe that is Hayden Parrott, number 11, with the catch. It is. He's able to jump up. It's going to be enough for another Crestview first down. Anytime they've wanted those free yards on the outside with the hitch, they just dial it up. Corners playing too far soft. Anytime you get close to your own end zone, you got to tighten up a little bit. The smart offensive play calling. Cole Harding says, you're going to give us those free yards? We'll go ahead and take it. Pickup of a 12. First and 10 from the 15. Penix going back to Harding. Harding able to uh, get off the first would-be tackler. And Harding able to get near the 10-yard line. So what could have been either a stop for no gain or a loss turns into a gain of about five. And coaches always worry about efficient tackling early in the season, especially game number one. You see that a great tackle in the backfield would have been a tackle for loss, but you missed the tackle, positive yardage again for Crestview. Second and five from the 10. And Price and Penix tried to draw the Panthers off sides. Now he's gonna look back at the sideline. It's the play, quickly gets rid of it. And a big stick out in the secondaries, Noah Adams comes and lays the lumber on Bo Eggleston. Yeah, second time in this ball game, Noah Adams recognizes the quick screen. That time the bubble variety couldn't get their hands on him. He comes up and gets a good tackle. No gain on the play. It's going to bring up third and five from the 10 here. Under three and a half minutes left to go before halftime. If Crestview wants it. They have the fade down here to the short side to Jones. And they're going to go to that uh, far sideline. Nice job climbing the ladder. Parrott to come up with a catch. Still a little pushing and shoving after he's out of bounds. It's going to be enough for the first down. So first and in goal inside the five for Crestview. Now how many times today have the secondary allowed a guy to catch the ball in front of him at the sticks or a little bit beyond to turn that down box over for Crestview? Great job by the receivers of Crestview knowing where they need to be. First and goal from the three. Harding trying to stretch this out, working his way in, and he's going to get in for the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. A little bit of a business decision on the outside at the goal line. That's going to result in an easy touchdown for Crestview. Crestview looks as if they're going to seize control of this football game. Parkway snacking on danger right now. 22 nothing on our Lottics Jewelry scoreboard with Parrott on to attempt the extra point. Parrott will get into this one. 
low liner just crosses the crossbar, but that's all you need as the kick is good. So 21 nothing on our scoreboard. The late second quarter, we'll take a break here at WOSN. Two thirty-seven left to go here in a quarter number two. Crestview able to add on to their lead thanks to the three-yard touchdown run by Jared Harding. That was a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Your first call for all of your insurance needs. So twenty-one nothing on our Lonix Jewelry scoreboard. Your family-owned and operated jeweler for over seventy years. Visit them at twelve forty-four South Shannon Street in Van Wert online at Lonix.com. Now two thirty-seven left in the half. You have two timeouts in your pocket. You know, Parkway, if they can put something together here and go in for a score, you get a little juice going into halftime, but they got to stop being their own worst enemy with penalties. Kick fielded near the sideline as Green has done a little bit of everything. He's going to return this one as well out to the 30-yard line. See what the Panthers can try to do here in the final two and a half minutes of the half. Now, Logan Green, he's an exciting football player, isn't he? Has the ability to run the football. That time on the return game, we've seen what he's done with the playing defense at linebacker. He is some kind of football player. Parkway from their own 30 will go back into the shotgun. Fletcher Smith, Smith the give, fighting across the 30, so pick up of a couple of yards. The give that time went to Landon Hamrick. Now we talked about how they can go deep on the defensive line. Crestview, that is. That time, Nathaniel Frymouth comes in and makes the tackle, rotating bodies through there. And that is a huge point of emphasis for Jake Harmon, the defensive coordinator. Pick up of a couple of yards, going to bring up second and eight. Parkway right now seems kind of content. Just trying to make something happen. They don't seem to be in a big hurry. Two minutes left of the half. I want to set up one of their quick screens, getting the ball to the outside. Crestview able to read that one as Devin Crouch just had nowhere to go once he caught the football. Yeah, Devin Crouch was all by himself because the missed block on the perimeter. And Barry was not able to get that block established. And then, well, what do you do when you got a guy hung up? Well, that's, that's a time for everybody to get a piece of it, right? White jerseys came flying. Which is exactly what they did. So third and eight. From the 32, down a minute 20 left to go. Crestview looking over at their sideline. A little confusion in the secondary. They're just going to roll with it. Smith trying to run a little bit of the options. Going to keep this one himself. He's going to get out to just shy of the 35. Don't think that is what their coaches wanted now. Crestfield will use a timeout here with 59 seconds to go before halftime. Yeah, smart decision, right? If you're going to run the football and you're going to be short of getting the first down, you have a timeout, you might as well use it. You're going to get the football back. You'll have two timeouts left with about a minute. And remember, this is a punt return game. It's been very good mm -hmm. so far. They should get good field position, Crestview that is. So stoppage. Gives us the opportunity to tell you once again that tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. We also want to let you know that you should check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out a broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more. My favorite is the scoreboard, which you can also get on the WOSN Apple app. You can get all that as well at WOSN.TV. And we're going to get a flag. I think illegal substitution maybe. Well, we'd had a couple plays without a flag, so the officials deemed you know, yeah, we have to. That's right. Now, you talked about the People's Bank, right? Mm -hmm. How do you not have Dwayne Johnson <laughs> as your spokesperson, right? That might be a bit pricey. Well, it's going to be a legal substitution on Crestview, and I think it's going to be Parkway. That's going to be enough for a first down. And it's going to be close. Same maybe, just a little short. Oh, that's a big penalty. 
Uh, I'd say personal, personal foul. foul. Well, that's definitely going to give him enough for a first down. How did the personal foul take place in between plays? You so know, that's a call you don't see very often. That changes what uh, Parkway's going to try to do here. Our, uh, oh, yeah. our camera guy, Jacob O'Neill, said his guy running his mouth, talking. Oh, okay. So that, that's going to be a dead ball personal foul because you, you, you're saying things that hurt feelings. And officials still, we hear a lot of blowing of whistles. We can tell you that. Yeah, Cole Harding is already out, all the way out at the numbers. And he is wanting to know exactly what transpired that resulted in the big penalty. Because you remember, they called timeout to stop the clock. And all of a sudden, that timeout was actually helping Parkway. They're going to have the ball at midfield, first down and 10, and they still have two timeouts. Just under a minute left to go, so plenty of time now for Parkway to try to go 50 yards. Shotgun snap, Fletcher Smith able to make one man miss. Now he's going to do what he does best. He's going to tuck it under and run, and he's going to get out of bounds after getting a first down inside the 40-yard line. And Ren Sheets had him in the backfield, but the footwork just a little bit too nifty. Fletcher Smith gets out of it. The man they call Fletch with a big yardage. Now we see what Fletcher Smith does well there. Scramble at 12 is a first down to the 38. And now another timeout taken, and it is Crestview who wants to talk about things. They're reeling a little bit. They want to keep this goose egg on the scoreboard for as long as they can. Yeah, I like the decision, though, by Jake, Jake Circle. Let's get our quarterback moving, right? How many times we've we seen him in the pocket, and there's a guy on him right away. That time they moved the pocket. Nobody was there that he wanted to throw to. He has the athletic ability to scramble all the way back to the left for big yardage. The officials taking this as an opportunity to talk as they wanted to make sure there was a couple things they could work on. Time out by Crestview because you want to make sure you're all organized, right? The situation has now changed defensively, right? It has. Make sure your secondary is in the right coverage. You don't want to have a blown coverage and a guy runs free. And next thing you know, it's 21-6 because you weren't aligned. Yeah, if you were Parkway, you were putting the football with a minute left at your own 35. You're now at the other side of the field, the Crestview 38 with 48 seconds to go. Feeling a lot better about yourself. Also feeling a lot better that the sun is now beginning to get underneath the tree line. It's Fletcher Smith looking to roll once again. Thought about a throwback screen under pressure. And he's able to get out of one, but he can't get the second guy. And he's going to go down right near the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten about a yard or two. And another time out here this time, it's Parkway that will take one. Yeah, Crestview said, you know what, if the quarterback's going to roll inside linebacker that side, we want you to go ahead and split the gap of the offensive line and get on top of them. That's their adjustment to the moving pocket. So it's going to have to be something where he's going to throw the ball quickly when they're moving the pocket. Otherwise, linebackers are going to be all top of Fletcher Smith. It does go as a game of one, so second and nine coming up when play resumes. Now 36 and a half seconds left to go before we get to halftime. You get inside the 30 here. If you're Parkway, go ahead and take a shot at the end zone. Throw one up, go vertical. See if you can get a score on a fade route. Because that'd be huge. You'd see this place get energized in a hurry. They get points right before half. Both teams ready to go here. 36 seconds to go. A little surprised Crestview hasn't loosened up their secondary more. Safeties are still within about 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Fletcher Smith now alone in a shotgun. Under pressure once again. Trying to scramble, throws, and he's just going to have to get rid of this one. Now we talked earlier in the game about spying the quarterback, right? At uh, that time, it was Isaac Klein just waited for the quarterback to try and leave the pocket. Once he did, he's going to go dialing him up. Fletcher Smith thought he could scramble around, get some more yardage with his feet. Uh, no way. Isaac Klein all on top of him. That brings up third and nine. Just under 30 seconds left to play in what is, I'm going to assume, very easily four down territory. 
Smith once again with a back. Wasn't ready for the snap, heads up play. Fielding that one is Logan Green. Ball comes loose again at the end of it. Crestview says they have it. It was a Crestview player that came up from the bottom of the pile with it. That was Braxton Leith, number 32, is the last man there. And it looks like the Knights are going to cause the fumble and get it back. Now, second time tonight, there's been problems with the exchange for this Parkway offense. This time, the quarterback, Fletcher Smith, looked like he was barking signals outside, and all of a sudden, the snap comes. It's going to be another costly turnover. Logan Green tried to pick it up, and to me, it looked like as he was being tackled, he tried to lateral it back to a guy and allowed Crestview to fall on top of it. Boy, things have changed quickly, twice in this last segment of the half. The Crestview is one timeout, 26 seconds, just shy of midfield. What are you trying to do here? If I'm Crestview, I do have one more timeout. Go ahead and take advantage, throw it up. You got some big guys outside, run sheets. If you get them in the game, let him catch it, six foot six. That's exactly what they're gonna try to do. Fires this one, passes, caught. Able to work this sideline, Hunter Jones out of bounds at the 38 to 39 yard line of Parkway. Stops the clock with 20.8 seconds to play. We'll call it the 39. I'm telling you, if Hunter Jones makes that little outbreak and it goes up vertical out of that, they're gonna have a touchdown. Penix rolls his time to the far side, fires again. Pass is caught. Going to Kellen Putnam. Putnam out of bounds with the first down as he's going to get inside the 25. Picked up about 15 or 16 more. Down inside 15 seconds to go in the half. That's big yardage because it allows them to get inside the 30. So they have at least one opportunity to throw it into the end zone if they want to. Penix has done a nice job running this offense. In the shotgun with the back to his left. Wants to quickly fire, turning around. That one is going to be caught, and it looks like Crestview will take their last time out as Eggleston had to dive or go down to a knee to come up with that one. So it does stop the clock. 8.6 seconds to go in the final time out of the half. Yeah, probably one they should drop right there. It's not worth the, the time on the clock for just six yards. And you saw the dismay on Cole Harding's face over there. We took his play card and just kind of threw it up in the air like, ah, guys, what are we doing right there? That was a costly catch. Not many times coaches are mad at a guy catching a, a pass, but that time letting the clock run for six yards just not what Crespi wanted. It's a gain of what turns out to be forced, what does get him just inside the 20 yard line. So safely the opportunity, throw this one into the end zone. Question is, do you have enough time now with 8.6 seconds left? I think you throw it in the end zone here, and then if you have enough time, it's not a touchdown or not intercepted, do it, it again. Do it again, yeah. yep. But don't run a play short of the end zone here and not have an opportunity after it. Uh, timeout taken by Crestview. What's their final of the half? So see what the Knights elect to do. I'm going to go trips right here. Look at the height inside with Eggleston, six foot six. Well, they are going to, we can hear the coaches coming out. They're going to put another second or so. They might put two seconds on the clock. So that, it'll help out Crestview as it'll go from 8.6 to 10.5. Yeah, Parkway's going to have to change their coverage because if they just run a vertical right up the seam, it's going to be a touchdown for Eggleston. Penix looking. Look at middle of the field, under pressure, nowhere to go. Out fires this one into the end zone, it's gonna be intercepted. It's a good stop for Parkway to end the half with the theft. So Parkway able to get out of trouble as the interception will end the half. I think it's Devin Crouch that came up with that one, number zero. Yep, that's gonna be him getting the high fives from his defensive teammates in the end zone. A second time in this half that uh, Parkway was able to dodge a bullet in mm -hmm. the red zone or else this game would be a big time laugher. Now Parkway able to feel a little bit better getting the stop before the half. So 21 nothing. Crestview leads this one at the half. We'll take a break. We'll have the second half for you after this here on WOSN. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here at Parkway. Just about ready to go for the start of our second half. 21-0. 
Crestview with a lead over the hosts on our scoreboard. And again, our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Lonnick's Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lodix.com. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the foreshadowing that we did before the game about the keys of the game, seeing how teams are, are doing in this position. Crestview, number one, relax and have fun. I think they've been a relaxed football team, right? <laughs> and they're definitely having fun scoring 21 points. Small to big, how many small routes, short little passes have they turned into big games? Uh, that's been a check there. And then Penix power, we thought it would be the running of Penix, but it's actually been the throwing of Penix mm -hmm. that has moved this offense officially. So I would say one, two, and three, all three checks uh, there for Crestview. Take a look at Parkway right there, number one protection. Definitely an area that they've struggled with all night long. Fletcher Smith has been scrambling for his life. Open field tackling, done a pretty good job of that. Coming up and getting the receivers to the ground on quick little hitches. And just too much uh, cushion allowing those hitches to occur. And then don't empty the box. They haven't done an empty in the box, but they're not handling that big offensive line very well. Big fellows up front for Wayne Trace controlling the line of scrimmage. I cannot tell you, and it's been twice now, you've said empty the box, and it's been hard for me to not... What's in the box? What's yeah, that's in the box? right. Yeah, yeah it, it was his wife's head, by the way. Um, great job. Spoiler alert. By that first half for a brand new staff over at Crestview. They had to feel good going at halftime. On the other side, though, Jake Circle yeah, had to almost circle the wagons, if you will, at halftime. Make sure his guys kind of dodged the last second bullet. Devin Crouch with a big interception. Let's see if that's a turning point for them. See if they can bounce back in this game. We're also going to have to tell uh, Jacob, our camera op, that it's a, that's from a movie because you said head in the box, and he turned around, and he's like, you guys carry heads in boxes everywhere? Yeah, it's an old Brad oh, Pitt movie. Okay. All yeah. right. I don't know. I don't know what he knows. And, and and thanks to Dave Bowen coming up and saying hi, right? The principal over there at Crestview, great. Uh, he came over and visited with us and smiling. Well, he should be smiling, though. They're up 21 nothing. He was telling us about Cole Harding, and the whole reason that they hired him is because of the beard. And he said he came into the interview, and they saw that glorious beard and said, no, oh, we got to hire this guy. Second best beard I've ever seen behind, hmm, Ron Swanson oh. from Pawnee, Pawnee, Indiana. He had a fantastic beard. But uh, Cole Harding, if you keep winning games, you can go on to win this game and keep winning. You just let that thing grow, don't you? I feel like Ron Swanson was more mustache than beard, though. <laughs> he grew a beard once in a while, and it was okay. glorious. All right. I'm yeah, his mustache was, was top notch. It's a dirty little secret about me in the office. Yes, sir. Watched the first season, didn't think it was funny, haven't seen an episode since. They did uh, major changes. In, That's what uh, everyone tells me. Spoiler alert, it went on for like seven seasons. I, I'm, I'm aware of that. Okay. I have a lot of other viewing options, so I'll, I'll be okay. Parkway's going to kick to Crestview as we get our focus back on the uh, task at hand. And I'm sure WOSN would prefer that they uh, pay us to talk about the football game going on and not uh, TV reviews. It's going to be a legal procedure against Parkway. And that is going to negate an onside, surprise onside attempt. And I think they were going to come up with that. You see the empty spot near to 50. Nade Martin going to widen out for Crestview. Another costly turnover, penalty rather, for Parkway because they would have came up with that football. They had Logan Green in great position to come up with that surprise. And... Jake Circle told us, remember in pregame, we were talking to him. And he mm -hmm. goes, wait till our kickoff game. We got a couple surprises there. They got a kicker that can do some things with the football. And you saw it right there. And okay. Crestview is going to put Ren Sheets back here, too. Yeah, we see we see Crestview. That was what I was going to mention. We see Crestview changing some of their personnel. That's going to change what Parkway is going to do. They send this one deep. This one fielded at about the 12 yard line by the very, very speedy. Hunter Jones. Yeah, Hunter Jones, one of those guys that you look at him, you're like, oh, he's not that fast, but all he does is just run by Sorry, people, I was right? Kellen Putnam with that one, number three, not number two. Yeah, it's close, right? You watch Sesame Street, what comes after two? Three does, so you're okay there. Yeah, we try. I do like the fact that you stopped laughing after you say a number. In pregame, folks, he's like to count. He'll, he'll, practices numbers and he laughs maniacally and 
I appreciate the fact that during the broadcast, you don't do that, partner. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, we're trying to be a little bit more professional here this year. So Crestfield started their own 36, about a first down run. One thing you talked about uh, with keys to the game, we thought it was going to be, you know, Penix, kind of the uh, star running the football. But how about what uh, Crestview's been able to do? Jared Harding just got the call there. We've seen uh, Braxton Neath do a great job carrying the football. So Crestview's found a few guys to to run the football with. Well, the stars of the run game have been Yinger, Walls, Wolford, Kreischer, and Sheets, right? The, the big guys, it doesn't matter who it is in the backfield. The big fellas moving some black jerseys. Gain of five, now they will swing out, is getting uh, Harding out in open space, catch the pass, and he's going to get out of bounds near midfield. It's going to be enough for a Crestview first down. It looks like a Parkway defender on the ground cramping up. Always an issue first game of the year. Even if it's not really hot, you've never really been at these game tempos. Your body is going to cramp up. Anytime you see someone grab the toe of a, of a guy on the ground and push it towards them, that's telling you the calf is cramped up. So there's a gain of nine. It gets the ball to midfield, so the stoppage will uh, give us the opportunity to tell you that tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. So does that mean there's the people's deposit, the people's, uh, what else is going on? So they're going to take a little deeper look at the injured player here. So with the opportunity, we'll take a break. Just underway, second half here from Parkway. It's Devin Crouch, the injured player for Parkway. See him making his way back to the sideline. Be a big blow if he has to miss an extended amount of time. He had that big interception right before half. That stymied Crestview's offense. Got to get him back on the field. First down from midfield, Penick's going to let this one fly. He's got Ren Sheets able to hold that one in, and Sheets, who had a couple slip through his fingers early on, is going to get in and score the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Uh, boom, boom, let's shake the room. Ren Sheets, as you mentioned, had the post in the end zone that he dropped. Not this time, baby. That is easy catch and pitch. Styling and profiling. Ren Sheets, another six for Crestview. 27 nothing with the sophomore Hayden Parrott on to attempt the extra point. How about the big arm of Bryson Penix rolling to his right? Just unleashes a laser. Tough to miss your six foot six receiver. Put it out, easy catch. And the extra point on its way and that one is good. Able to add on the extra point, so 28-0. Thanks to the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown, the 50-yard pass play to Red Sheets. Paul Crestview here in the season opener. We'll take a break on WOSN. A big play explosion out of Crestview continues on here in the third quarter as Ren Sheets hauls in. 50-yard touchdown pass from his quarterback, Bryson Penix. A nice job at the end of the play. Sheets dances his way into the end zone. It's a Leland Smith Insurance Service touchdown. And on our Lonix Jewelry scoreboard, 11-01 left to go third quarter. Now 28-0 Crestview with lead over Parkways. They tried to take home this beautiful traveling trophy that sits behind us for the 10th uh, time in the last 11 years. If you're a skilled player in this Crestview offense, you got to like it because the ball gets distributed, right? How many different guys have caught passes tonight? You better pay attention and run a route crisp every single time because you never know when the ball is coming to you. Everybody on that Crestview offense gets included. Parrott with a line effort. This one bounces, and it's going to be – Misplayed, picked up uh, just shy of the 15-yard line. As Crestview able to pin in Parkway deep, they'll start at about their own 22. Now it's now time for your best drive of the, of the night if you are Parkway. Finally put one together. See if they can stack some positive plays. Get a touchdown here. Not out of the woods yet if you're Crestview. You know, this is a Parkway team that they put 51 points up in their last scrimmage. They like to go fast tempo. You let a team like that get some rhythm. They always have that dangerous quarterback in Fletcher Smith. But the Crestview defense has been outstanding all night long. Parkway felt like they had something going their final drive of the half before losing it at a fumble. 
That's Crestview 37, which is their deepest penetration of the night. Quick swing pass on first down, trying to get this to the outside. Nice job by the Crestview defense, able to stretch that play out, out of bounds. It's good to see Logan Green and call that in and, make, and uh, come back out in the field. If you're going to run quick screens, you're going to have to win perimeter battles with your skill guys. And Parkway losing those battles to the Crestview defensive backs, doing a good job of standing up to outside receiver blocks that time. Loss of yardage. You don't run many quick screens outside to a running back and you get a loss for yardage. It shows you how good the defense has been for Crestview. The play did lose a yard. It's going to bring up second and 11. Quick pitch trying to go the other way with Green trying to bounce to the outside. Nothing there, so he's going to come back. Quarterback's going to help with a block. Another flag down after Green was able to turn up field. So we got to hang on two flags as well. See what one we see. And initial call of a hold. Is that what both officials saw? We'll take a look. Look, I haven't seen this many, this many holds since I had to chaperone a senior prom back in 2009. There has been a ton of holds in this football game. There, there's actually holding because I thought there'd be a lot of, I guess, the prom. It's the junior high ones. You don't have to worry about it, right? Because everyone's free. <laughs> well, junior away. high, they, they, they stare at each other across the gym, don't they? Yeah. So hold negates what would be a big play out of Parkway, and it's going to back them up near their own 10-yard line. So 10-yard walk-off means it's now second and 21 from the 11. Fletcher Smith calls for it, quickly gets rid of it. Pass caught, Devin Crouch. You can see Balls Crouch out. back. He's going to fumble it away. Crestview right on top of it. Only one there. I think the officials are going to say he's down by contact. They might have called him down. They might have called Crouch down. And that appears to be the ruling. Now, good to see Crouch back in the football game. But if you're Parkway, you're going to say, hey, Devin, you're back in, but make sure you hold on to that football. Great job by Crestview coming and chopping the ball out from behind. Better hold that football. It's the hope and dreams of our community. Gain of two on the play brings up third and 19 as we roll inside 10 minutes left to go in our third quarter. Fletcher Smith alone in the secondary or the backfield now will get penalty and See one official calling for a false start. Yeah, it's going to be a false start on Parkway. Center flinched. Moved the football a little bit. That's going to be enough. Not a lot of third and 24s on your play sheet. Crestview wanted to change the personnel. Parkway left everyone on the field. Oh, they'll just go with Smith. We saw him make a couple things happen with his feet. He's bumped out of bounds outside the 10 near the 15-yard line, well shy of the first down. That's Leith, who's had a good offensive night come up, made the tackle there. And one thing that's really impressive about Crestview is the depth, right? How many different guys have we called getting involved in tackles? They've rotated bodies. And if you're going to make a run, you're going to be a good, solid football team. You're, there's always injuries, right? There you're gonna, is. You're going to yeah. have to have depth, and looks like Crestview has that. You know, we talked in the pregame. Crestview had planned to rotate as many as 12 guys defensive line alone. And they've been able to keep guys fresh. So minimal gain out of the scramble. Here's a punt. This one fielded inside the 50. This could be another good start on the field position for Crestview as Hunter Jones able to get a return near the 30-yard line. Yeah, football Jones been effective all night long on the punt return game. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to predict it right here. He's going to return one for a touchdown this year. He's got some giddy up in those feet. Does what a good punt returner should do, right? Get the football first and foremost, and then get vertical in a hurry. You don't want punt returners that go back and forth side to side. Get some positive yardage, and Hunter Jones, he's electric doing that. Crestview will start from the Parkway 30 following the near 20-yard punt return. Penix rolls to his right, pass is complete out to Ren Sheets. Sheets going to make the first man miss and drag another man across the marker. It looks like it's going to be enough for a first down. Needs to get to the 20-yard line. The official's right at the 20. 
Official on the far, far side of the field says it is enough, and they do move the sticks. Yeah, you look at the stats from a year ago and run sheets, you know, only 83 yards receiving. You wonder how, right? A big target like that, six foot six, pretty good hands, even though he had the one drop in the first half. Reliable guy. And you saw his feet, pretty good quickness. You know it's a guy with skills. You've seen him play basketball, so the ability's there. I'll pick up a 10. I'll go back to Leith on the ground, right up the middle. He's going to bruise his way in for about five or six. He might be close to seven. He gets inside the 15. Crestview leaning on that uh, senior group up front, as Miles mentioned at halftime. Kind of a sugar huddle right there. Offensive line went back and talked to Penix, got the call, and they're ready to go. Second and three from the 13-yard line. Penix didn't uh, either like the call or saw something maybe a little different, looking to the sideline for something else. He continued to call in plays. Play clock under 10. Don't think that's a big hurry for Crestview. Penix again has to roll out. Makes that far side, keeps the football. He's going to have the first down as a big group is going to push him out of bounds. The pushing and shoving continuing after the play but it is blown dead at about the 10-yard line. Yeah, Crestview caught Parkway in a blitz, looked over, changed the call, but the blitz was still effective. But anytime you have quarterback with feet that can avoid guys, they can make a negative situation into a positive, and that's what Penix did there. So it's going to bring up a first and goal as they're going to spot it just inside the 10-yard line. Penix with a handoff once again. Leith takes the oh. contact. And he's going to get in for the touchdown. Oh, how about Leith making a speed bump of that Parkway defense? Lunges into the end zone, but you might be surprised here, partner. There's a flag on the ground. Crestview walking back. Parkway fans making noise, so All right, I'm going to put one and one together. That was a personal foul. Was it after the score, though? Yeah, officials are talking. Parkway is acting as if it's going to take the touchdown away. Officials still conferencing. Nothing's gone on the scoreboard yet. Got to get still the official talking. word coming over. Now they're going to have a conversation with the brand new Parkway coach. Still waiting. Now we'll get the call. We haven't gotten the touchdown signal yet. Interesting. This is where you want the official to have the, the speaker, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so they are going to count the touchdown. They're going to say it's after so, the touchdown, and I think they're asking Parkway, do you want it assessed on the kickoff instead of the extra point? If I read lips correctly, I think that's what transpired. All I know is Hayden Parrott's on to attempt the extra point. High snap, a good job by the holder as the extra point is up. This one, however, is no good. So first miss of the night from Parrott comes with eight, so 8.07 left to go in our third quarter, but it is 34-0 thanks to the 10-yard touchdown run for Crestview. Another Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. And we'll take a break here on WOSN. Braxton Leith able to add on to the Crestview lead thanks to the 10 yard touchdown run. That is a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Your first call for all of your insurance needs. And our Lotic scoreboard. Now 34-0, Crestview the lead over Parkway. We also want to tell you that the presenting sponsor for our game tonight is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. If you smell what the bank is cooking. No, now you're just using my jokes that I used at halftime. Uh, they're, they're, they're good, cool. though. They're cool. good. I see. I see how it's going to be. Well, I'll tell you what you don't see every often, right? You don't see team kicking off from the 25, do you? So the 
Personal foul assessed here on the kickoff. Ball hits near midfield, picked up at the 40-yard line. Parkway was going to have some pretty good field position as Landon Hamrick able to get that into Crestview territory, which gets the Parkway fans up on their feet. Haven't had a lot to cheer about here on opening night, trying to make something happen. They're at the point where they just want to see that goose egg get off the scoreboard. Well, it got the student section fired up just a little bit. Uh, see the theme over there, beach night, right? Uh, over in the student section, everybody in their tropical shirts and their lays and stuff. And you know, it reminds me of how nice the Rockford Beach is here in town. Uh, Randy and I stopped there, went some, did some laying out in the sun and went swimming beforehand. Beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, if you ever want to see a beach whale, then you know exactly what I look like. First down from the Crestview, 46. As Fletcher Smith trying to fall forward, and he will for a couple. Yeah, a little option inside, reading the defensive tackle. Tackle collapses down on Logan Green. Go ahead and pull, and that's what Fletcher Smith decided to do, positive yardage. Game of three on the run is going to bring up second and seven. Should we talk about the... Biggest thing that happened with that mix, missed extra point. What's that? It makes it 34 points instead of 35. Oh, that's right. It would have been the running clock. So uh, it keeps Parkway in it. Tough to come back with a running clock at 35 points. The clock runs. And a little movement up front is going to lead to another penalty. Well, when they get back and watch film and go through the stats, Parkway is going to be befuddled at the number of penalties all night long, especially the false start variety. And everybody knows how many holding and personal fouls have been, but false start negates a really good first down play. Now you're second and behind the sticks again. Let's go back it up to second and 11, as Miles said here. It's under seven minutes left to go on our uh, scoreboard in the third quarter. And again, a scoreboard tonight brought to you by Lodix Jewelry, family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Crestview and reading the uh, wrong player that time. The uh, fake went with, I believe it was White Carpenter, number 16. You know who loves that play? Who? Quarterbacks around America because that is a pass completion because he threw it forward. Easiest pass you'll ever complete and get positive yardage out of it. Picked up three yards. It's going to bring up third and nine from the Crestview 45. Smith in the shotgun with a sidecar to his left, who now moves over to the right. For the man in motion, here comes the blitz. That one timed well. One flipped out to Green. Green able to make the first man miss. Can he carry the entire Crestview defense to the first down? No, he cannot. There is timing a blitz, and there is absolutely precision timing a blitz. It looked like the CFL where the receivers are running forward at the right? snap. Hunter Jones absolutely blew up the backfield. Can't say enough about the Werthal. Fletcher Smith, instead of getting blown up and holding on the football, a nice little flip to his all everything running back, Logan Green, who turned that into a positive. And no doubt about it, right? You got to go for it here. Yeah, right? there's no choice. It's a gain of five on the play, brings up fourth and four. Just over five minutes left to go. And a very quickly moving uh, third quarter. Sparkway quickly gets to the line. Smith gets the snap. Going to run that option. There's the pitch to Green. Green's going to have the first down and more. That far sideline. And he's going to go near the end zone. Knocked down right near that front pylon. He's going to be inside the five. Yeah, most importantly for Parkway, there is no laundry on the ground. That one's going to hold true. Biggest play of the night for the Panthers. They are knocking on the door. Quickly get to the line of scrimmage, waiting for the down box to come at about the one-yard line. And now it is Fletcher Smith trying to get in, but it looks like he's going to be a little short. Say either no gain or loss of a yard. Might be a loss of a yard. Back and that's to one two. of the difficult things about modern-day offense, right? You snap it back five yards to go one. You know, the old days you just get under center and sneak it in. Tough to do from five yards back. Spread teams stay in the spread. It's good to see. You'd rather have that than someone under center when you haven't been under center all year. Smith rolling out, 
Tries to cut it back in, looking for that goal line. And I believe he is in for the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. How about Fletch diving in? Reservation for six. Parkway gets on the board. What an athlete. He was dead to rights at about the one, but just a little shiftiness. And then the dive, and the toughness knows for the end zone, gets this Parkway offense on the board. Able to get in and score, makes it 34-6 on our Lottics Jewelry scoreboard. Now the Panthers will uh, go, oh, they're gonna kick the extra point. Kept, looks like kept everyone on the field. Thought about maybe going for two, but they'll kick the extra point. Extra point on its way, nice high kick, good look. As the extra point is good by Braden Bruns. 4.02 left to go in the third. Good to see Parkway get on the scoreboard for the first time this year. However, they still trail Crestview 34 7. We'll take a break here at WOSF. Good to see Parkway get on the scoreboard. Uh, two plays after a big run. Fletcher Smith from two yards out is able to score the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Our Lonix Jewelry scoreboard now 34-7. Onside kick and a good one high in the air. And that's going to be fielded by who else but Mr. Green. And Parkway's going to come away with a football. Oh. We got a flag at the end of the play. We'll see what happens here. Maybe a little, little too much celebration. Oh, are you I'm wondering if they're going to rule that Parkway did not give Crestview an opportunity to catch the ball or if they caught it before it hit the ground. The ball has to hit the ground. You can't catch it in the air if you're the kicking team. So kick catch interference appears to be the call. Yeah, that's what the official is telling Coach Circle. Ball's got to hit the ground first before you have an opportunity to recover because you're not giving the receiving team a true opportunity to catch it. Heck of a kick though, right? That was. Had a few tricks and we've seen a couple of them so far. Now the officials making the long walk over to the other sideline. I don't think Crestview's gonna care how they get the football, just more importantly that they have it. Four minutes left to go here in quarter number three. A 34-7 game. Uh, say what you will about these officials. At least they have been efficient at explaining everything, right? They, they have taken their time. They've made sure both coaching staffs understand what the rulings are and what is going on. There's nothing more frustrating if you're a head football coach and you can't get the guys to talk to you. They don't, you don't mm -hmm. really know what's going on. So both, that's off to the, the officials for explaining both staffs exactly what's going on. So we have seen the pass interference signal. So I'm, I'm going to assume he means kick catch interference or not allowing, as Miles said, not allowing the catch in the air. Now, does this mean a penalty and a re-kick or does this mean Crestview ball? As the ball is now at the Parkway 40. And we are waiting for Crestview to break their huddle with their coaches. Now going to be Crestview's ball on the 40. Which would be the spot of the kick. Exactly. That's why we keep Miles around so he can explain things like that to us. It's Crestview from the Parkway 40. First down is going to pick up a couple of yards as they turned it over to Jarrett Harding again. Good work by Colin Legenkamp, number 15 for the Panther defense, chasing it down from behind. Looks like Crestview has a young man that is cramping up as well. Gonna take a knee. Officials gotta, anytime you have an injury, you tell the players, go ahead and fall to the ground, right? Make the official whistle it dead. Don't try to be a hero, limp off the field, and it costs us time. Let's see, one of the linemen for Crestview, he was able to make it back. I think that was the man you were talking about, Caden Wolford. 
sophomore lineman. Yeah, Wolford was the one that bounced out, and then they're going to bring in is it Dave Karahein. Penix is going to roll out to the far side. Fire pass. That one's going to be incomplete up and over the head of the intended target. Trying to fight that one in there. Trying to get that one into a, a tight window to Isaac Klein. The toughest throw a quarterback can make, right? A seven route on a line over top of a defender playing underneath it. And you're moving at the same time. But shows you a little bit of the arm strength of Penix. He's going to be a special one for Crestview. He's really put on a show tonight. He's done a really nice job. Is third, and we're going to call it about eight back at the 38-yard line. Yeah, other than the throw right before half that resulted in an interception, I, I thought he's played with great control. Yeah, that really just a, a thing of trying to make something happen. Shovel pass is going to be intercepted right into the arms of Trent Rollins. Rollins now with a blocker in front of him. Rollins trying to get some help. Pets back to the near side. Rollins at two. Crestview players is going to be down. Flag comes out on the tackle as Rollins is able to get to the Crestview 10-yard line. Rollins, Rollins, Rollins. Get that defense, Rollins. Trent Rollins. How about him playing the shovel pass? Unbelievable. And then he takes like an hour to run 40 yards. Rollins stumbling, bumbling. And they're going to get a penalty on the horse collar. That's going to move it even closer. And just when he thought Crestview was going to run away with this, Parkway. Yeah, they're going to go half the distance because it is, I believe, a personal foul at the high school level. Either way, it's going to result in about a five-yard penalty. And so Parkway is going to have this thanks to the Collins INT. What a defensive lineman's dream, right? You're just hanging out in the middle of the field. You recognize, hey, that's that play they burned us with a couple times. Pick the big paws up in the air and take it and then run. From the five-yard line now, we'll get a stoppage here. As a little confusion, Crestview is going to take this one. Just in case things get a little hairy, Crestview wants a moment to kind of talk to their guys. I well, had that sudden change moment, right? And mm -hmm. they couldn't recognize who'd need to be out on defense instead of playing with 10. Called the timeout so you can get the right personnel on the field. Everything getting changed a little bit. No, you've been in, I, I imagine, in your coaching career, you've probably seen a little bit of everything, but 34, 34-7, you still feel pretty good. If it changes and you go 34-14, <laughs> do you start to sweat a little bit? All, all coaches never believe their lead is big enough, right? <laughs> That's the thing. Most coaches, we're miserable people, right? You're on the sideline, you're just predicting nothing but terrible things happening. And, then, you know, you got that 34 nothing. you're feeling pretty good. Uh-oh, then 7, now 14. Right. Hey, we scored 21 yeah. points in a quarter. What's to say they can't do it? Yep, yep. I always would remind my team, though, look, they still have to do a lot of good things, right? We are the ones with the big lead. Let's just play good football. They're the ones that have to do miracle things. So first and goal for Parkway following the Collins interception and long return. Return went to the 10. Horse collar penalty tacked on five more. So here we go. Parkway from the five looking to score to at least make this a little bit more interesting. Fletcher Smith. Tiptoeing his way in, was looking his way around contact, and he's going to pick up uh, maybe a yard inside the five where it's going to bring up second and goal. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be the speed option with him and Green, but there was no doubt about it. He caught it. Nah, don't worry about the pitch, my friend. I'm going to keep this thing. So we'll give him a yard to the four. It's three more chances for Parkway to stick this one into the end zone. He's got Green to the left, now Green again, as he has multiple times. Steps over to the right, does become the pitch man this time. Trying to get to the corner, cuts up, and he's going to take a big hit as he's out of bounds at about the two. And I believe that was that Evan Sowers, number one, that applied the big hit there for Crestview. That yeah, shows you what a special player Logan Green is. Made four guys miss him, still got to the one-yard line. Third and goal from the one. No back this time for Smith. He's going to do it all himself, trying to get in on second effort. Falls over the line, and he's in 
for the Panther touchdown. That Penix thought he was going to get to the quarterback on a blitz through a gap, but the quick feet and then the toughness of Fletcher Smith powered his way into the end zone, and things have sure have gotten interesting here for Parkway. So Fletcher Smith scores the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown of 34-13 here, under two to go in the third quarter. With Bruns on to attempt the extra point, Smith will hold. Bruns getting lined up, high snap, but it's up. Kick is going to be pushed just a little bit to the left, and it's no good. But thanks to the Leland Smith touchdown run by Fletcher Smith, now 34-13. Parkway inching their way back in, and we'll take a break here on WOSN. Well, partner, what a change of events. We kind of joked uh, in that break. Crestview was a miss, missed extra point away from this being a running clock situation, but now 34-13 on our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard here. Another onside kick. This one is fielded by Crestview as Hunter Jones. Oh, well, boy, they just know where to put him on the football field to get the ball. In the the ball just kind of find him, right? Good job by Colton Royer, special teams coach over at Crestview, getting the hands guys up there, and who's got better hands than Hunter Jones? Good design by, by Parkway, but you're kicking it to Hunter Jones, who is Johnny on the spot. That was Fletcher Smith with the one-yard touchdown run. That was the latest Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. So as we said, 34-13, our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Werner online at lodix.com. Knights now with the football just past midfield late in our third quarter. Yeah, H back, usually follow him, will take you to the ball. Handoff straight ahead, back to their workhorse back tonight in Braxton Leith. Leith is going to pick up about four. As they'll spot this right at the 45-yard line. And Noah Adams, the safety for this Panther defense, coming off holding his wrist. Hopefully he's going to be okay because he has been flying up, getting involved in that run game. He started out 11 yards deep, met it at the line of scrimmage. Back to Leith once again, waiting for the uh, blocks to form as he will get about three or four more. Another flag coming in late. We'll hold things up here right now. It's going to be third and about two. We'll see what happens. Looks like a late hold on that far side, the early indication. And on the sideline here, they are working diligently on that forearm of Noah Adams. It's the left forearm. Looks like they're trying to tape it up so he can get back in the football game. There's White Carpenter, number 16, who's come in to fill that spot. Avoided by Adams. Big penalties, Crestview backed up to their own 45. Now second and 16. One of those drives here offensively for Crestview, I think you'd just be happy running the football here. Mm -hmm. Get out of this quarter. Second and 16, don't do anything costly. Give Parkway a little bit more life. Bad snap. Penix has a race all the way back inside his 30 where he's able to fall on it. Bad to worse now for Crestview. Now that's why you have a quarterback that's a great athlete there, right? Be the first one back there to fall on mm -hmm. a bad snap. Otherwise, scoop and score opportunity for the defensive lineman. You don't want like a Jared Lorenzen type quarterback in this offense? The Pillsbury throw boy, right? He was great to watch. Hey, hefty lefty. Yeah, he was fun. Took Kentucky to a bowl game, which... Yeah, Tim Couch, then him. <laughs> yeah. age didn't happen a lot. Unfortunately, I believe just recently passed away. He did. Played some arena football. Still was slinging that ball around. He was a fun quarterback to watch. It's a loss of 15 on that play. And now Parkway getting fired up as they're going to come up with a big stop. They're going to force a punt here. But it's going to come at the end, uh, start of our fourth quarter, I should say, 
as Crestview in no hurry to run another play. So the final seconds tick off. We've reached to the end of the third quarter. Hang on, folks. This one might get a little tight. We'll see how it plays out here in WOSN. Crestview is going to have to do one of the things and believe they've done much tonight. Punt the football, wobbly punt. Start the fourth quarter is going to take a Parkway bounce and be downed at about the 42-yard line. It's a good field position partner for the Panthers. They find themselves down 34-13, but you have the entire balance of this fourth quarter trying to cut into that lead. Well, you always wonder if you have the belief, right? And I'd say they do. This is a program that Jake Circle started six months ago working out at 6 a.m. Accountability was huge, and they've built this thing on a word they call family. And it's tough to quit on family, and you see the Panthers, they're working hard at trying to stay in this football game. They score here. Boy, things will get really, really interesting. Yes, they would. Got Fletcher Smith in a shotgun. Send one of the receivers in motion. That's a decoy. They get the quick pitch. Green, Green able to cut up field, and he's going to get near midfield. Flag comes in, and there might be a face mask at the end of this one here. We'll see what the call is. Yeah, it's going to be a face mask against Crestview. And momentum's a real thing, right? right. And you feel this uh, Panther offense, this team, the sideline, this stadium getting a little more energized, stacking good play after good play. You can see them start picking up some tempo. A lot of time still left in this football game. So they give them five, nearly five on the run, five more on the penalty. Should be a first down. Down box had one, but the sticks hadn't moved, so they're going to give the uh, crew a moment to move the sticks as Parkway has reached the crest view 47. Quick out, ball comes to the near side of the field to uh, Landon Yunker. The junior able to get inside the 45. They will get out of bounds. Looks like at about the 43. A little surprised they're not going a little bit quicker with their tempo. But I guess it's better to get the right play that you want with some time ticking as opposed to being discombobulated. Smith gets the call again. Went to quickly get rid of the football. Receiver wasn't looking his way. Now he's got a scramble. He's going to throw this one away in the sideline. Yeah, smart decision. Nobody there except for the near receiver. And everybody was on top of him. Just gun it by everybody out of bounds. Really intentional grounding, but you know, you're out of side the pocket, you throw it to a receiver, just throw it to where he can't catch it, mm -hmm. live for another down. That's exactly what happened. Now they've got third and six on the down box. Yeah, really four down territory here though. Inside 11 minutes, you don't pick it up here on third down, you're going. Empty backfield, Fletcher Smith looking to run in. He's going to run right into a sack at midfield. Well, I think you now now you go ahead and punt the football. It's going to be too far, but fourth and five, you, you would have gone, but fourth and 14, you know, it's a sack that you just can't take. And yeah, Bo Eggleston able to wrap up Fletcher Smith as uh, he's backed up to his own side of the field. Well, it looks 49. like uh, Parkway is going to indeed stay offensively and go for it here. Fourth and 14, back at their own 49. There's nothing hurt at this situation. Find yourselves down 21 with 10 minutes to go. And a quarters coverage out of, way, uh, out of Crestview. Smith trying to step up, wants to run out. Fires, pass is going to be incomplete. And the ball is going to go back over to Crestview. <laughs> now, disappointing end of that drive for Parkway. Had momentum to start the drive. Good position of the field to start it with. Positive yardage on first down, but you know the sack and then getting out of the pocket where he doesn't need to kind of limits where you can throw the football. Good defense by Crestview, trying to get 
the ball back to their offense. They are successful at doing that by staring at the quarterback, making sure that Fletcher Smith has nowhere to go with it. 10-3 left to go on our scoreboard. 34-13 Crestview with the lead. Scoreboard tonight again brought to you by Lonix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Now keep an eye on the H back near side. Follow him. He'll take high, you to the ball. High snap, but able to uh, corral it is Penix, who just hands it off to Leith. Leith able to get near the 45. We'll mark him at the 46. Pick him about three. Now how about Leith right there introducing himself to Landon Yunker right there, saying, You're going to try and tackle me? Well, I'm going to make you taste my knee pad first and foremost. High knees right through him. Reminiscent, remember Roger Craig, you're an old 49er Ooh, guy yes. with the high knees running the football? Definitely did. Second and seven now from the 46 yard line. Penix rolling to the far side. And at first, that might be the most athletic sack we've seen in a while. At first, Logan Smith was just going to jump because he thought Penix was going to get rid of it. And when Green came down, Penix had the ball in his hand, so how about if I just tackle you instead? Yeah, Logan Green looked like Shark Week right there. The big, great white opening the mouth and just swallowing the quarterback Penix hole. He is a sudden player, got in the backfield in a hurry. Third and long now for Crestview. A loss of five of the play is going to bring up a third and 12. Parkway are rolling some of their coverage to the near side where Crestview is three receivers. With the sack, clock continues to run down to 8.40 and counting. Play clock getting low as well as Crestview's going to let that run all the way down before they take a timeout. So the timeout on the field will step aside as well. 8.36 to play here. And we'll take a break on WOSN. Third and 12 coming up here for Crestview following the timeout. Showing off the arm is Penix, but the pass is going to be intercepted. As it was that Braden and Bruns comes up with the theft. Now about BB playing the, the center field, cover three, just getting depth, reading the eyes. Post route, Penix just stared it down. Didn't even see the free safety lurking. Another turnover. Parkway still fighting. They're still up and, uh, and take a look. got uh, injured players, so that'll give us the opportunity to tell you that tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Eight and a half minutes to play. And does Parkway have enough time to make up a three score deficit? That might be a question for after the break is uh, they're gonna take a look at the injured player for Crestview. So while they look at the injured player, we'll step aside here at WOSN. Oh, it's good to see the injured player able to get up and walk off the field. Hunter Jones, who's had a great day in the offense and, more importantly, the special teams was, uh, the I believe, the intended receiver on that interception. And when Bruns had the pick, he might have just kind of landed on top of him or maybe the way he landed, the uh, point of the football might have gotten into his chest. But uh, Jones able to walk away. Now a little trickeration, halfback pass. Here's the wobbler. This one thrown downfield to Green. Green, can he get his way into the end zone? He does for the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. A great time to call it after a dead ball. Catch the defense napping. Oh, the old halfback pass. Heave ho, not the prettiest pass, but the prettiest result. Parkway staying alive. Devin Crouch, I believe number zero, the man on the uh, throwing end of that. And just like that, now 34-19. And I think you can definitely make up a two-score deficit in eight minutes, right? <laughs> eight minutes is an eternity in a football game. And it looks like Parkway has a little bit of trouble getting the 11 men on the field. Yelling at the sideline, they need something. If it's a gunner or an extra lineman, they needed some help. Finally, we saw uh, Jaden Green run out there's the extra body 
Brunsu started this with the interception on, and he's going to add the extra point. So the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown on the halfback pass has made this 34-20. Crestview still with the lead, but Parkway inching ever so closely. And now, Miles, you got to start to feel uncomfortable now, right? Hey, you're very uncomfortable. You've turned the ball over. You're not making plays on the defensive end. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, that missed extra point. We should have had a running clock. The missed extra point, this game would be over. You'd be celebrating on the field, getting ready to shower and smile when you get back into town. But you got to take your hats off to this Parkway team, right? Just no quitting these fellas. So what an opening weekend of football we have had. Oh, this, this, we're on the home side, and these bleachers, man, you can feel the energy in the stands starting to pick up. Belief is a, an important thing, and right now these faithful here in Parkway, they have a lot of belief that this Panther team can steal it. And the Parkway fans just wanted something good to happen, a very quiet first half. Team was down 21-0. They stuck with it. For a team that was 2-8 and eight a year ago, and now... A little belief. It's amazing what a new head coach and young energy injected into this program can do. I know they've been cute with the onside kicks here of late. You see all the bodies for Crestview up close expecting onside kick. I, I think you kick it deep here. You got momentum. Runs gets into this one, does just that. A spot of the field where no one's at. Your hope is that one rolls into the end zone. It's picked up at the five. Trying to get something going. And about a big return. And this one may go back 95 yards. A broken play on the return. And Evan Sowers is going to go 95 yards for the score. Looking around, partner, I don't see any flags out on the field. Talk about a play if you're Crestview. You look back and you are just having a nightmare because you're going to get stuck inside your own 10 or maybe turn the ball over. And the next thing you know, that Parkway kick team just overruns it. And you're celebrating in the end zone. Rags the riches in one play for Crestview. Uh, just when Parkway had everything going their way down to a two-possession game, you're thinking about getting a stop, getting the ball back. And you saw how quickly Parkway scored on the halfback pass. And just as quickly, you give it up. Hayden Parrott on for the extra point. So the kickoff return for a score, the latest Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. The extra point is good. And Miles and I need a minute. So we're going to take a break. 7.58 to play, now 41-20. Crestview with the lead on a lot of jewelry scoreboard, and you're watching High School Football on WOSN. Well, Miles and I used the timeout. We we're able to catch our breath. Catch our breath. Halfback pass for a score. Kickoff return for a score. We trade touchdowns. Now 41-20, 7.53 to go. Kick return for Parkway. Ends up at about the 25-yard line. Caden Berry had it. And now we will see what the Panthers can do with the football. Uh, Crestview showed Parkway a little bit how to cover a kick. Boy, a host of... Knights just rallying around a return, making life difficult for Caden Berry. It's Parkway. Back to where they started, down three scores. The only difference is now a couple minutes have run off the clock. It's three receivers to the near side. One of them will go in motion. Fletcher Smith looking to throw, rolls out to that far side again, likes that right side. In this one for the sideline pass is going to be thrown away. Well, not everybody on the same page as uh, the quarterback 
thought it was going to be a pass. The outside receivers thought it was going to be a run. Fletcher Smith on the fake jet sweep. It was going to be a play action pass out, but the problem was outside receiver. Went and stock blocked. Tough to throw him a ball when his back is to you. Second and 10 from the 28 yard line. Once again, Smith will have a man coming in motion. Has to pick up a low snap. Just quickly gets rid of the football to Green. Green, once again, able to make men miss. He's out across the 30, near the 35-yard line. Now he's just one of those guys you don't even really have to block for, right? He just finds a way to get yards. Mm -hmm. You know, always remember coaches growing up say a really good running back is a guy that gets you positive yardage when nothing is there. Well, I'd say you check that box for Logan Green. He has been sensational all night long. That's exactly what he did there, picking up six. And it is a very manageable third down, third and a long four. Two receivers each way. And one of those receivers will go in motion. Now it kind of lines up as the H back. It's going to be that extra blocker as Fletcher Smith gets the call. Needed to get to about the 42. And official on our side, which is away from the sticks, immediately came in and told him to move the chain. So it is enough for the first down. Yeah, they, 39 was the gain to mark, and he was able to get there. Smart play by him, too. Once he had enough yardage, fell backwards, get down to the ground. Don't risk that football being a, an, an opportunity to get it stripped out. Fletcher Smith able to get to the 39, whereas Miles said it is the first down. Now looking to throw, it's this one out. That far sideline pass is going to be incomplete. Intended target, Caden Berry. Berry up looking for a flag, doesn't see one. An official in the middle field reached back to grab his flag, put his hand on it. In the last second, took his hand off, decided not to throw it. Uh, probably a good call. I didn't think it warranted an interference. Not a crisp route or crisp throw. Bring up second and ten. Haven't seen as many flags. Well, eventually your arm gets tired from throwing them, right? These guys are going to have to ice down their arms tonight after the game. It's empty set this time for Parkway. We we'll see five receivers. Smith drops back. Can't find anything. It's rid of the football in and out of the hands. The receiver cutting. That was green once again. Can't hang on to it. And it's going to be third and ten. And that protection issues again for the Parkway offense. Smart that you have a great athlete at quarterback, Fletcher Smith, able to avoid the first guy and get rid of the football. Also would have been another sack. Third and ten coming up here. All the Parkway players looking to the sideline. Please get sent in, almost becomes human chess. Coaches telling the team to hurry. The snap came with two seconds to go. Well, give and go. Look into that sideline with a fake of the hips. Pass to the near side, looking for Landon Yunker. Yeah, Yunker is going to lament the fact that he didn't track the ball sooner because it hit his left hand. Nice call on the screen and go inside slot. Yunker released up field. Had his man beat. Probably is going to score if he catches that when he wasn't able to haul it in. Fourth and ten. Offense stays on the field for Parkway. A situation where you're down three scores now. Six and a half minutes left to go. Good to see Hunter Jones back deep. Left the game earlier after that collision in the middle of the field. You see him rotate up now. He was expecting a punt return. Now he's going to roll up and play safety. Crestview, safe defense in on the return, looking for a punt. Smith able to get out of one would-be sackers, get rid of the football, and this one's going to be intercepted by Jones. Yeah, how about football Jones making a play? Gets knocked a little woozy, leaves the game, comes back in. Thinks he's going to catch a punt. Oh, wait, i got to play free safety instead? That's no problem. I'll just it's come fourth up and down, pick it. ball's in the air. I'm catching <laughs> it. I don't care how. That is his M.O. Boy, he has just got some quickness about him and a nose for the football. He is some kind of football player at Crestview. Crestview takes over following the interception. They have it at their own 48, trying to salt this one away. 
6.18 left to go in our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. So we may play well into the night here. At least for Miles and I, our first trip here to Parkway and a very entertaining one. Flag coming in here and a good run by Penix. We'll see what the penalty is. Uh, I think they're going to get Preston Kreischer with a little creativity on his block. He was, the, he was the guy that was looking up at the sky, hands on the hip, shaking his head towards the sideline. Usually that's the indicator that, Coach, I, I did not hold. Uh, the guys in the stripes are going to say you did, young man. You know, of course, no offense alignment has ever held. You that's know right. this, right? That's right. It's like playing pickup basketball. No one has ever committed a foul. <laughs> Same with offensive line play. I've never, I never held coach. Penalty backs up Crestview 10 yards to their own 38 yard line where it will now be first and 20. Knights let that clock run as far down as they can before handing it off. And how about Leaf just dragging a defender with him as he's going to get back near the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, Leaf, he's got some power for a young fella. You know, very rarely does one guy bring him down. He just keeps those feet churning. Crestview, they got a good one right there in his super sophomore. Picked up about eight on the run. It's going to bring up second and 12. Ball, as you can see, spotted just outside the 46-yard line. A little bit of a high snap, but no problems. Here's Lee turning it upfield once again. And it'll be brought down very violently after he crosses midfield. And a tackle by Noah Adams, who came back in after suffering that little forearm injury. He has been a big rallying safety for this Parkway defense. Anytime you get a free safety that wants to come up and hit, that is a bonus. Usually free safeties are guys that just kind of run run from the ball, not him. Good gain, he's gonna bring up third and four. Now at the Parkway, 46 as the run picked up about eight. Penix rolling out, I don't think he knows the pressure was behind him. Pass is thrown and that's gonna be incomplete. Trying to make the effort there was uh, Kalen Putnam. A good effort by Putnam laying out, extending, trying to save his quarterback with the throw. Just not able to corral, it's gonna be fourth down. <coughs> I no. believe the punt team making its way out onto the field. A lot of things would have to go right here for Parkway to, to steal this game. But one thing, that if they don't get the win here tonight, they got to feel good about the effort. The effort's been solid all night long. Execution, not so much. they got to figure out how not to beat themselves. But this is a building block for this Parkway team. And Crestview looks like they're going to have another solid year as well. Punt's going to head towards the sideline. Nice job staying in bounds, and that's going to be down to inside the five. A tough sledding from here out for Parkway offensively. If they don't win tonight, though, partner, good news is they have a mm -hmm. team that they beat on their schedule next week. North Central's a team that they have confidence against, and then New Bremen, St. Henry, a team that they beat a year ago, and then Versailles. Versailles. You take a look at Crestview, someone's got to help them out with their scheduling. Only four home games. And you see how many road games at the beginning of the year. They're going to go to at Macomb next week. It should be a fun one. Then Wayne Trace, and finally home against Ada. And then on the road against, against uh, Allen East. It's criminal. Who's the AD over there? <laughs> four home games. Ouch. First down from Parkway. They're going to call it the five. And they're going to very quickly work their way out of uh, that spot. Now you can never go wrong when you give the football to Logan Green. Gives you an honest day's effort every single time. Unfortunately, Crestview defender down looks like another cramp issue. And a player on that sidelines should be easy for the trainers at least come take a look. They're going to Problem is, I think he was laying across the sticks, and they're going to move the sticks out of the way as they take a look at that player who, once the sticks are moved, is able to pop up. Can't quite see a number from where we're at. You've had your calf cramp up before, right? Yes. 
there there are worse pains, just, but you, not you many. Would, you would take a knife and just slice it, it off. You do. It, it hurts so bad, and you got to talk yourself into relaxing. After the gain of 10 to get the first down, Logan Gain will get it again. It looks like about no gain. She might have lost a little bit. Let's say second, about 11, it looks like, from the 14 yard line. Fletcher Smith, a nice job hitting the open man. Pass caught. Devin Crouch, Crouch, <laughs> <laughs> almost to the 20-yard line. A little spin and Rooney by Crouch, but he shouldn't have because Zayden Martin said, hello, how are you? Third down and about seven coming up here. Whistles, and we got all sorts of issues. So we're going to get false start called on Parkway. Yeah, started to motion before you allowed Green to get set, and the officials are going to call it. You got to be set for a tick, and then you can start to motion. Crouch went in motion before Green was fully set. And if I'm on that sideline, I'm asking the official on my sideline, why now? Can't you just let that go, right? A little nitpicky right there. So backs up Parkway to a third and 12 back of their own 12-yard line. Fletcher Smith going to step up. He'll take off and run. Plenty of space in front of him. He's got the first down and more. Still on his feet. Able to sidestep one guy. Looked like he was headed for the sideline. Cuts back in and is going to get out to the 45-yard line. I have the feeling you're going to see a lot of those types of plays as this season unfolds for Parkway. They have two guys that are just electric with the ball in their hand. The only thing they're really lacking, right, is that receiver that maybe could stretch the defense over top, make the defense have to worry about a receiver going by them. And then this would be a real fun offense to watch. Scramble goes for 33 on the third and 12. Parkway has it out now to their own 45. Quick hitch, that one's going to be incomplete as Wyatt Carpenter unable to hang on to the football. Stops our clock here, 2.38 left to play. You mentioned it earlier, got to like the fight of Parkway coming in for 21-0. Could have easily folded it up, down 21-0 at the half. And we're really an extra point away from a running clock is once again the young man, Mr. Green, has just bullied his way inside the 25-yard line. Hey, you remember as a kid that vibrating football game where the guy with the foam football would buzz around the field, and he didn't know how he did it, but he got positive yardage? Very reminiscent of that run right there by Green. Had one of those. 35 yards on the run. They're going to give it right back to Green. How about the stutter step, the stutter step, the reverse field, and a very pedestrian game of five. Yeah, I think he ran out of gas halfway through that run. You could visibly see it. And yeah, Coach, I just ran 60. You're going to give me the ball again. I'm a workhorse, but I'm a tired workhorse. And now he's going to make his way to the sideline. How pure is that, though? The effort that is just so it. pure. One of the seniors, Parkway team is counting on this year. Pass is thrown into that sideline, getting it to Braden Bruns. And Bruns is going to get in, and he will score the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown from 15 yards out. Fletcher Smith came up kind of gingerly holding his left thumb. Wondered if he got it on a helmet or something after releasing the football, but he was looking at it with a concerned look. 
Jake Circle went out and talked to him. Looks like he's going to be okay there for the hold. Minute 35 left to go. Runs after the touchdown. Will be called on to attempt the extra point where the kick is up. And he will knock this one through. A Parkway keeping it interesting. Now 41-27 for the minute 35 to play. And we'll take a break here at WOSF. Well, Brayden Bruns with a 15-yard touchdown catch. The latest Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown has made this 41-27. The Lonnox Jewelry scoreboard, minute 35 left to play in the season opener at Parkway. Squib kick, this one hits and will be fielded at the 30-yard line. Is it possible we see another big return? <laughs> And they're going to say that Harding had stepped on the sideline at midfield. He was ready to go the distance. Look, I'm not sure what's going on over at Crestview. Colton Royer, the special teams coach over there, go hands team on kickoff return the rest of the year, right? They've had great returns with it. <laughs> A fantastic return yet again. It was going to be another touchdown by Harding. Mm, yes, it was. He'll have to settle for the football at midfield with a minute 26 to go. As Crestview is going to try to run this out and retain their traveling trophy. And they lead 14-5 in the series with Park, Parkway, excuse me. And now flag coming here for the offsides. Yeah, you got to be careful, make sure guys don't lose their composure. That's a Jonas Farmer who kind of forklifted the offensive lineman in front of him. That was Wolford that he bench pressed for about three yards. Yeah, sometimes defensive linemen will do that on purpose. Joe Green with the Steelers used to do that once a game to send a message, but you say, ah, I just guessed wrong. Crestview so letting the clock run all the way down. The game clock is stopped because of the change of possession and the penalties. They go right back to Braxton Leith. Leith will have the first down as he's able to get inside the 35 down to the 34. And that should just about do it. And Noah Adams comes up again. Number one, been a big time hitter all night long for this Panther secondary. Got that left forearm taped up. Got to like the courage of the young man. Crestview set up it now in victory formation. Yeah, every, every coach's favorite formation right here. We're going to let this run all the way down and we'll successfully only have to do it once. As Penix wasn't really ready for the snap. And he will go back and put a knee down to the 40-yard line. And I believe that is going to do it. Now they're going to leave. They have the down box. They're telling chains to stay. And it really doesn't matter. All everyone wants to do is run out this final 15 or so seconds. That might be some... Uh, the handshake line might be a little interesting. Oh, well, congratulations. Cole Harding is getting his first win as head coach over at Crestview. And... You know, future is bright for Parkway. Also, a lot of positive things. They're going to do some damage on that schedule this year. Parkway, that's a team that nobody's going to take lightly. But Crestview, I think they have the pieces, buddy, especially with that veteran offensive line. They have the pieces. They could have a really good year. So final seconds run off in our final score tonight here in the Lottix Jewelry scoreboard. It's Crestview retains the traveling trophy as they defeat Parkway tonight 41-27. to We'll... Uh, Take a break here on WOSN. Joining us now, our dynamic dude of the game, Hunter Football Jones. Huge win tonight. Got a little bit hairy, but you had a big night offensively. Of course, you had a big interception late in the game. Walk us through that interception. You were back deep to catch the punt, and then all of a sudden you had to come up. What happened? Yeah, so we were kind of expecting them to punt there, and then they rushed their offense out, and they kind of played scramble drill on us, and we worked in practice and just stayed locked to our guys and made a big play when we needed it. So. Thankful for our teammates and couldn't do it without them. We got ourselves in a great spot. 
everybody knows this is a kind of a big rivalry with Parkway. Parkway, you guys play, play for a trophy. You guys got to hold the trophy up after the game. What's that mean to you guys? Uh, it's it's just another week, man. I I know it's a big accomplishment, but we're looking forward to week two now. Coach Harding's got us going week by week, and it's a huge accomplish, accomplishment, like I said, but now we're on to Macomb. Yeah, Coach Harding gets his first win at Crestview. It's got to be special for you guys, right? Absolutely. We're going to go to Wild Willies and celebrate after this, so we're going to go get some pizza and have fun. Well, congratulations. Great football game tonight. Hunter Jones, our dynamic dude of the night. Thanks for watching, everybody. Great win by Crestview.